Oh, I forgot the the pin over here. Hey, my lead. Hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? I'm going to breakfast right now. Have today off. So I'll go live for a little bit. See if anyone wants to join or just join in chat. It don't matter. Hello, excursion with my sister. Which morning? That's cool. Hopefully, John and I will hang out like we used to. Uh, next, <clears throat> next time we hang out in a couple hours. Or the, uh, well, not that much just because his arthritis has been flaring up. Not one person. Well, did have one person. That's all right. Take my, I got powdered fruit drink too. Next, the beverage base powders aren't that good in some of the MREs, but this one stuff that Fruitopia or whatever it was is really good. It has a lot, far less powder than the beverage base powders. You know, it's weird. And gives you more flavor. It just mesmerized, mesmerized me. Um, my MRE is the, the drink power, you know, there's no kick to them. You know, it's like you're just, they taste watered down. You're putting the same amount of water or less, and just, they just taste incredibly watered down. I'm having a breakfast baconator with double egg. Because my sister does not like eggs. I don't know why. I think eggs are really good. She hates eggs. And then, I mean, you're going to pay the same amount of money. They're not going to, you know. However, um, you know, I asked her if they put her egg on my one sandwich. I said, yeah. So, I mean, you're paying the same amount of money. You might as well get the egg, too. You know, my sister said I don't want it. But... As long as I remember to put it on. That's the thing. I have Wendy's La Kudos, too. I have my two grannies in the car. And she gave them both a free thing of Play-Doh, too. And I asked about some. I mean, they don't have veterans discount on Wendy's. But I remember they used to have senior citizen discount. My dad used to get all the time. And 10% off. But they did away with that. However... Since I'm over 55, I qualify for senior citizen discount now. It's really weird. I got free drinks. I did a video about that. My first senior citizen discount drink, you know. I'm sure I didn't call, qualify for a frosty, though. I'm just chilling out with you guys, relaxing. Having fun. I said, I don't go, but thankfully I don't go. And they have four day weekend, which is nice. Just kind of easing the work. 
two days and then have four days off, which is really nice. But then, so on Monday off, I have to work that Friday, so. Because I'll just have Saturday and Sunday off, but it's okay. I doubt I'll go as long as I did that a Thursday night or Friday, no, Friday night, was it? Yeah. I was just weird how that worked out. But you never know. You never know how a life's going to work out. Hey, Dasana Victor, how you doing, buddy? Were you able to film that? Were you able to film that, buddy? Oh, I want the, how do you do that to have the full thing? Right there. Yeah, that overlay, I want that. How do you, uh, bubble start, bubble start, how about that, how about that, I don't want no damn music, because that's kind of annoying, no, I don't want to add no music, that's the music so annoying, nope. How is it? How do I put it so I make the? Add video clip. Logo. Oh, you driving? Okay. Were you able to film that uh, thing with that the WWE building? How do I make that come back out? Settings. The layout. Hmm. I don't know. Well, the other ones I have different. I don't know how to set that. I forgot how to do that. I don't know. Landscape. It don't matter. How do you do that to banners? The piece. Yeah. You know, how do you, you remember the brand outlining? I do red, maybe. Boom, oh, red's kind of cool. How do you? Damn, I don't remember how to do that. Doesn't say. Getting lost in that stupid shit. Hmm. How to display comments. 
settings. Yes. Oh, play sound. Yeah, definitely. I guess. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. It don't matter. That's why heat my breakfast. No, I didn't know if you filmed. You said you filmed that. You filmed that WWE building. If not, it's okay. How are you doing, the son of Victus? You said you're driving. That's okay. Anonymous dude's post. Mm. Sunday service coming up at four. Whatever new bacon steakhouse, that looks good. Okay. So I didn't know if you were able to, if you were driving up. Awesome, buddy. You're always welcome up. Hi, Pandora. You want to come up to Pandora? I haven't seen you in forever. You want to come up and talk? You need to sign your business? I miss you, Pandora. Up, ah, oh, pretty good, pretty good. Tired, still driving. Still got another, oh, 12, 13 hours before I'm home. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, oh, I got, foot, I got footage of the WWE building. I'm from the northbound. Awesome. It's, it's not that great. I tried to get it from the southbound, which is a better angle. But yeah. I could not get over in traffic to do so. But I got to go back up in two yeah. weeks. I'll get you a southbound shot next time. But when, okay. I get home, when I get home, I'll send you the northbound. But yeah, the, oh, the, the, you, the WWE building. I mean, it's a skyscraper in Stanford. You know, it's 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 about a wow. It's about a fifteen-story building. It's not it's it's not insubstantial. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good size. That's cool. So I'm eating. Um, I had a baconator. Breakfast, bacon, and potato salad, Pandora. I got Slim Jim and some other stuff. Yeah, Wendy's breakfast is pretty good. Wendy's That's breakfast cool. is good. I, I agree with you there. Wendy's breakfast isn't bad at all. I had to stop. I stopped in Strasburg. One of our um, friends in Virginia, she brought us a bunch of supplies. And we and she she bought me um, late lunch, I mean, late breakfast, early dinner. I had a bowl of chili, which was incredible. Really awesome. I yeah, like yeah. I do too. It's off Strasburg Diner. It's off of Interstate 81. And it was a big bowl of chili and had crackers and a little bit of hot sauce. It was perfect. I love a lot of the diners and stuff, you know. That's why I like Waffle House. It has yeah, that diner type feel to it. It is. Waffle House. A lot of people are snobby about it, but man, Waffle House and Huddle House, you can't go wrong with either one, either one of them. You just can't. I've never been to Huddle House. That's pretty much just the same as Waffle House. 
Jesus very Christ. similar. There, there, there's a huddle house at a, inside of a uh, Flying J off of 70, off of Interstate 78, and it's, I don't know where it is. I think it's, it's over toward Hershey, Pennsylvania on 78. Oh, cool. I haven't eaten there, so, but anyway, it's a huddle house instead of a uh, subway. You know, most Flying J's have subways in them now. It's about all you can see is subways. No, I'd rather go to something like that, a breakfast place than a subway. You know. I remember we had so many subways. I mean, we still have two in my area, but there was like, we had one at the Walmart, right? And there was a building across from it that had a subway too. Yep. Like 100 feet of, yeah, it's weird. There's a, there's a subway at my nearest Walmart. Yeah. Less and less than two miles northwest on the on the on the uh, highway that it's on is another freestanding subway and you know subway they're they're like quizno you know um, for their franchisees yeah they they will if you don't buy a if you don't buy a second franchise at subway they will set one up to compete against you that's weird let me oh, go yeah. i mean there was one yeah because there was one that uh Right, like a hundred feet away, that it became a beer distributor, you know. Yeah. And then, like about three miles, there's another one right uh, there, the old school one right next to across from Dollar Tree. It's really weird. Well, it's funny because in my old neighborhood in the suburbs, there's a subway that's been there since like 1989. Yeah. And you know that's rare for any fast food restaurant to be in operation that long. But it's funny because that subway has outlasted so, so many re- fast food restaurants around there. As a matter of fact, the Hardee's yeah. that have been there since like 1986, it closed like five years ago, six years ago. Really? Wow. It finally, it finally went out of business. But I'm just, it's just, subway is just too darn expensive. It's just, it's just too much, way too much. I know. You know, I have a yearning every so often for like a meatball sub or something like that, though. But I mean, it isn't really pricey. Hey, it used hey, to not be you, that way. No, nah, no. Nah, it used to be you could get a cold cut combo, a six inch cold cut combo, for about three bucks, and that yeah. was, that was that was not unreasonable because for three bucks you got a pretty darn good sandwich fixed about any way you wanted it to be made. But I think now a six inch cold cut, which used to be their cheapest sandwich, is like five ninety five. I think might be more than that. I even more than that in some areas because I I, I, I stopped at a um, Connecticut travel area yesterday on the way to um, Quakertown, and they had a subway. They had a subway, an Annie Annie Ann's pretzels, a yeah. McDonald's, and a Starbucks. And I kind of casually looked at the subway prices, and they were about forty percent more than what the rate what a, what a freestanding subway would charge. Like a, as an example, like a foot long cheesesteak combo with a drink, a drink, bag of chips, and a cookie was over twenty dollars. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think um, all the sub places are really expensive. You know, from Jimmy John's, I got that gargantuan Jimmy John's. That was like twenty dollars, I think. I have not been to Jimmy John's or Jersey Mike's yet. And everybody oh. tells me I should try them, but I but but like Jersey Mike's, yeah. um, well in New Jersey, oddly enough, but in Jersey Mike's, there's like a there's a Jersey Mike's at every exit on two eighty seven in New Jersey. Oh really? Wow. You're expensive well, too, but I like your food. Haven't been there yet. There's a couple in Birmingham, but I I just never have reason to be around there. You know, I just don't have reason yeah. to be. In that area, so just don't go. Go so while you're saving yourself money too. Yeah. I mean, it got to be too much money. Well, okay, it's like breakfast, okay? Yeah. I I would rather at home. I mean, I mean, me and my girlfriend, we would occasionally go out for breakfast if we were traveling, we were driving somewhere together. But breakfast, I'd rather just make it home because I'm, I'm sorry, I can buy my own bacon, eggs, grits, and toast. You know, yeah. I can make it myself. But. I don't know. I, I, you know, it's, it's, I, I, you know, I don't see how people eat out so much. Um, I've got people in my hiking group that used to 
just complain about being broke, but they would go, they would get the DoorDash or Uber Eats a couple of times a week, and then they'd go out to the bar twice a week. Well, hell, you know, that's, that's a lot of money. That's a lot I know. of money. Where well, I'm at, we don't have like DoorDash or Uber Eats, but I heard it's really expensive. It, I'll tell you what's weird, man, is out where I live in the country, I went to Taco yeah. Bell. We went to Taco. I went to Taco Bell. One of our rescue workers. We had to go do some. We had to go do some help for one of our one of our other rescue yeah. affiliates. And I and I took her to lunch at Taco Bell. And we're standing at Taco Bell, and an Uber Eats guy. This older guy's working for Uber Eats. Is over there picking up an order. And I asked him, and he said he was delivering it out in the country. And I wow. Went, wow. I, just couldn't, <laughs> I can't believe that Uber Eats has enough business to stay busy out where I live, but I guess they do. Wow. I mean, with us, I mean, some guy at work said, like, if you if you know the right guy, you can pay him more money, and they'll pay, they'll ship it out to you. I mean, uh, it was like, uh, from Erie to, uh, I guess he got like uh, Olive Garden. Yeah. To go all the way, and they like, charged him like forty bucks to deliver it to him. So forget that. That's too much money. But he said it was worth it. But I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I'm not paying for. I mean, I mean, I, yeah, forty I, bucks is crazy. That, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money for somebody to come and drop food at your door. Now, I, I could have. I mean, I afford but it now. By me, I wouldn't be able to if I kept doing it. You know what I mean? I wouldn't do it. Oh, well, well, there's, well, okay, like, as an example, one of the people in my hiking group, she's about like, oh, she's like 28, 29. Yeah. She, she and some friends had Taco Bell delivered, and their Taco Bell order was 20 bucks, and then there was a t- almost $20 delivery fee, and I'm like, my God, you could have gone to a Mexican restaurant for that. And, ha- and had beer and margaritas and still had enough to pay, pay the tab and I know. pay the, pay the, um, the tip and everything. It, I, I don't know. It just seems like a lot of people just have that's just money. too much damn money, though. Yeah, that's that's a lot big waste of money. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I mean, ordering online, there's a lot of times it's really expensive. You know, you have to really look to get a good deal and stuff. I it's just. Well, see all what these I different ways they have where you can get stuff. It's like just yeah. What I've noticed about like Little Caesars is Little Caesars now, you cannot order online from them. You have to order through their app, and that's it. Yeah, that's what my sister had to do. Yeah, got my sister ordered from them, uh, and uh, I got that. I did a video of that pizza porthole thing, which was, I thought was kind of neat. You go in there and you type in a number. And, and, I mean, it's just yeah. to keep it warm and stuff. I think that's a neat idea. That's about it. Well, it's, it's a good idea because it actually it keeps the pizza warm rather than having it set up there in a window and go cold on you before you get to get it. Yeah. But you know, it's 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 just yeah. a pain in the butt that you have to download and use an app to do everything now. It's just it's just because I used to order I used I to order Little Caesars and I would order it through the web. And now, if you go to Little Caesars and try to order it, they, they try to get you to download yeah. their app. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about, well, I don't know how much they make. They probably make a lot on that, too, you know. Well, it's and probably. And sometimes I don't think they have everything on there. You know, it's like a new item. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. Man. Well, they, they didn't on the website because on the website back when they had the, um, oh, what was it they did a few years ago? And I say few years, it may be as long as five or six years ago. They did the um, that bacon pizza they did for a little while at Little Caesars. Yeah, the bacon wrap pizza. Yeah. They didn't the have it on the deep website. Dish pizza. Yeah, they didn't have it on the on the website wow. of my local little uh, on the website for my little local Little Caesars. But a lot of times, my my Little Caesars out of my exit, that it would they won't have whatever the national marketing item is for. Really? Uh, franchisee doesn't participate or yeah matter, that's always driving me nuts. they just don't have it yeah so i know in maryland it seems uh, like sub yeah no go ahead oh no they, I, I remember when i was stationed at fort deeper maryland they had all these deals and stuff and uh 
They never participated. I, it was just weird. It was really expensive in Maryland when I went there in the Army, you know. Well, that's what I was going to say about, about my local. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, let me run. I got a phone call. I'll get back on in a minute. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. Bye. All right. Bye. Right. Oh man, that's good. I, uh, I'm drinking Sun Kiss. No, you more want to, yeah, I'd love to have you on again, Pandora, whenever you're able to. I mean, I love a lot of those restaurants too, don't get me wrong. It's just, the same again, too damn expensive. The whole DoorDash, they're charging you extra money and stuff. And then, like, uh, they're talking about that guy had that viral thing, the $18 Big Mac from that run rest station, which are super high price. People complain because he put like he gave him a tip too. But I mean, you just can't afford anything anymore. It's it's insane. It's beyond insane, you know. I don't know. It's really crazy. I just thought it'd be fun to do a live stream, you know. Oh, that got 21K, damn. I want to do one about that, though. Sunday service? Oh, cool. Let's see what we got. I don't know. Inflated, but I know exactly. I don't know. I mean, everyone's gone. But, I mean, it's it's tough, though. I mean, yeah. I did a 12. I did long life you might have done in a while you know but I was happy I did it I was glad I did it well, here it is there we go I don't know where they went that pin door I would like I don't know let me try to get this back to where it was there we go yeah, it's been horrible Pandora I have no idea where everyone's at and I said, whenever you're able to, yeah, you're always welcome to come up. That'd be fun to have you up again. We haven't talked to forever. I haven't talked to a lot of people in forever. <coughs> no, I don't know. I mean, everyone's like, you got three people here, maybe, but out, uh, yeah, maybe enjoying. I mean, it's still cold where I'm at. It's not like the eclipse is happening today, you know. I don't know. They could be. It's hard telling anymore, you know. I suppose I'm I'm out a lot, you know. Inflation's the worst. Cause I bought some stuff. I mean, I don't want to do a haul video. It's just too much. But I mean, I yeah, I haven't talked to anyone in a long while. I know you haven't. Well, you're always welcome to come up if. If you want to talk to me? Oh, if you want to, you don't have to. But um, it's it's still cold out though. I did a video. I mean, I I, I went out with my, you know, my sister. And I just went to qu qu a quick grocery shop. She wanted me to get her some stuff, and then I bought breakfast. It was her and the grand grand nieces. It came to twenty five bucks. But I don't think it was that bad. But I mean, they barely had anything. They had like the all the sausage uh, things. Thank you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hey, you can you hear me? Hi. Hi, yeah, how you doing? Hi, welcome Lisa? back. I missed you. <laughs> I missed you. I missed you. I, hi. Aw. You're so I've nice. had a lot of stuff going on, so. I know. That's okay. I've just been busy. I, I missed you, though. You're always I missed you, too. Nice yeah, you're awesome. How you been? I'm doing okay. Went back to work. Uh, oh, dude, like, that's good. That's good news. Yeah. Well, yeah, you probably like, clocked it. But <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, it was just, I went back to work and like, uh, I'm already over it, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. I had to yeah. go back to work. Yeah. I, I I mean, mean, yeah. yeah. I had to. And then like, I guess we have tomorrow off because of the eclipse and stuff. So I have a four day weekend, which is good. Oh, that's good. Will you have to work next yeah. this Friday, Kevin? Though, 
Yeah, I have to work this Friday and make up for it. Yeah, if, I figured you did. That's how you used to do it. Yeah, I remember. Oh. Yeah. Back so what's been going on? Oh, not a whole lot. Back to work at ten hour days now, and then I broke my record for uh, live streams. I broke last year. I did like I thought I did over twelve hours, but I did almost twelve hours. I beat it by like forty minutes. <laughs> when did you do that? I think Thursday night or Friday night. It was just weird how it evolved. No, it hadn't been Friday night. Oh, it would start out Friday afternoon, and then all of a sudden, like, people would leave. And I said, well, I'll come back. And then they come yeah. back. And there was, like, people who'd leave and come back, like, two or three times. <laughs> it was just weird, though. But it was it was a fun live stream. And there were times I nodded off a little bit, you know, but I woke up. No one said they, they heard me snoring or not like that. So I've been nodding off <laughs> a little bit. A little bit on some of the live streams, but it's funny. What you been on? Who's so what you been up to? I know you said you've been doing stuff, yeah. What's that? I said, Whose uh panel you been on? How's Turtle doing? Oh, she's doing can good. I mean, she's doing good. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you good. I mean, she's doing fine. Uh, she slowed down a little bit. Because she felt like she oh, was, I mean, she she was seven to. days when she would sleep like 12. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, she was alive like all the time. I know. I used to do that too, like go live three, four times a day, yeah. you know, yeah. and I don't know how I done it then, but she's she's doing it. Yeah. She's growing that channel too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know she's doing it. She hit 2,500 subs. That's really good. Last you night. still do you still and talk to I her mean, and stuff? Can I was on me? her live for a while because as she said, because it was me, her, and Gordon. Mm -hmm. And she said, "Well, I got I got to do something. I'll be right back." Or something. I think she fell asleep, but then we ended up leaving. But I mean, you know, yeah, she. I think she fell asleep. I mean, that's she fell. She fell asleep at the beach and got sunburned too. Sadly, uh, you know, yeah. Does she live close to a beach? You got to be careful when you're at the beach. Oh, I know. I know. But like if I burn at the beach, it just turns yeah, to a I tan think, later. I don't know how far the beach is from her place. Yeah. Can you hear me good or not? Jason? Yeah. yeah. Now you're cutting out. I can, you're cutting you, out. I can hear you good. But... What's it sounds that? like you're a rope. It out? sounds like you're a rope. Yeah, it it's sounds like you're roboting. Let me hold the phone. I, ha I have it, it on speakerphone. Me? How about now? No, now you're good. No, you're uh, fine now. It, I mean, it, oh, I'm good now. Okay, I just had to move up the thing. Yeah. yeah. I just had to move up the microphone, I think. It's really but weird. Yeah, like if I, get burnt, so if I get burnt at the beach, usually it'll turn to a tan, you know? Um, it might peel a little, but it still turns to a tan. What was you going to say? Yeah, well, that's, that's what happened to me, but I'm just like, I mean, there was, I remember whenever uh, I was in AIT, I guess some guys spent some time at a beach house. They had like a three-day leave or something like that. And this one uh -huh. guy could barely walk. He was so sunburned and stuff like that. Like, oh, man. Yeah. And then, of course, some guys would go and slap him on the back being jerks and stuff. I wouldn't do that. But, I mean, and then... uh Girl Strong was mad because I said it's destruction of government property. You know, because you get a sunburn. That's, have, I you mean, ever, that's what have you ever What's went, that? Jason? Have you ever went to the beach and done the parasailing? You know, you I did the parasailing. I did two parasailing. over the beach, over the water, you know. No, I never did that. <laughs> uh -uh. Did you ever do that? I did. <laughs> yeah. Was That's scary? like one of the first yes, I was. I don't know how to swim yeah. either, but I'm telling oh, you, man. I was I was screaming the entire time. I thought because oh, I never really had gotten on anything like that, you know. But yeah. like I can ride yeah. rides and stuff pretty good. I'm pretty it don't really bother me, but yeah. I I mean yeah. I have a video of it, you know, me and this other person doing it. And oh, cool. I was screaming the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never, I never do it again. That. I remember uh, <laughs> I remember one of the funniest videos I saw was on America's Funniest Home Videos. I guess this girl uh -huh. was some of the parasol. She was on the beach and the boat took off and then she went to run and then she fell 
and it dragged her through the water, and then she went up, went up, and then and then she fell out of the harness. Of the water. <laughs> so funny. My dad looked like he was laughing. <laughs> and that's horrible, though. Yeah, but I mean, they have those videos and stuff. I've watched Mary's Punishment videos in a long time, but that stuff was funny. Me either. I don't think it's on anymore, is it? It's not on? I don't know. I, I don't know. I used know. to like I, when they I had... haven't seen it. Oh, I remember that Tom Bergeron or something like that. He would have those videos when he had like a giant head and he would like be <laughs> reacting and stuff. Those were so funny. I love those. I things. know. <laughs> I don't so bad. <laughs> My dad would shake his head and say, that ain't that funny. But I would be jumping up laughing. That is yeah. just so stupid. I love stuff <laughs> like that. I like laughing and stuff. Who was that guy that was up here earlier? Oh, the Son Invictus? Yeah. Or do you oh, call that Goose? him? Yeah. Goose? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He does like animal rescue and stuff. He's always like on the road and stuff, helping out animals and stuff. Oh, that's great. And, yeah. But he's a fellow vet like me. And uh, he said he was going to film like the WWE building and stuff. He got one shot of it. He's going to get another better shot of it next time. And he sent it to me. So I'll put it. He said I could put it up. Come on, because he's around like um, Stanford, Connecticut and stuff. So I thought I was kind oh, of okay. cool. Yeah. He was all the trouble with Mr. McMansion, but oh well. He's always in trouble. Hey, Jason, have you ever eaten at Drake's? Do you know what that place is? You know, that uh, restaurant? I've never been to Drake's. No, uh -uh. You haven't? They're supposed uh, to have like all kinds. That would be a good place for you, but it's so expensive. I was looking at their prices and stuff. And it's so expensive, but I, oh they have God. like burgers and things like that. All these different kinds of combinations yeah. of burgers and stuff. Um, yeah. I don't remember which one that you make your own burger when you go in. Is that Whataburger or? I'm not sure. I've never, been, I mean, I've never been to Whataburger. Okay. I've never been to Whataburger for, I mean, I've had the one where you build your own burger, I guess. Like yeah, cheese, put whatever you want. Yeah, I've done that. But, yeah, uh -uh. well, this place is different. It's got all different kinds of burgers, and I guess you could order them however you wanted. But you know, they they have all these different ideas, and um, some of them are like twenty five dollars a burger. Oh my yeah. god! That's yeah, yeah, that's the burger. I mean, wow. I don't even know why people try to open restaurants right now, like. Oh, they had they bound yeah. to have a lot of overhead, you know. Yeah. Because the last well, time I, I tried to buy beef, it was so expensive. I just let it go because I'm not a real beef. You know, I don't eat it yeah. a lot anyway. Yeah. Um. After I got sick, it seems like beef just tastes like metal or something. You know. Mm. Um. Wow. It just well, don't taste right. I tried to buy more like fish and stuff like that this time when I went to Walmart. You know, fish oh, and shrimp and stuff. Yeah. But I, I know there was this place. I don't know if I, I, I told you about it. I saw some video like this guy, Patrick Elway, one football player. I guess he had a place in the, in the airport, like a steakhouse. Mm -hmm. Boy, was that expensive. A yeah, side yeah. Of, a side of cream corn was $15. Cream corn. Ooh. I wouldn't I pay know. 15 cents for it. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> you know? 15 bucks for cream corn? What is it just they out can of the can? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they, they have a steak. He got a steak for 60 bucks. It was just a uh -huh. steak, a little thin steak, and that was it. No sides, no nothing came with it. Yeah. You know, like, he wanted a Caesar <laughs> salad. That was like 15 bucks for Caesar salad. Like $20, yeah. $22 for a side of onion rings. That's outrageous. And they, they had the burgers for like around 25 bucks too. I know it. And then I guess like they're all, they were rude to him. The waiter said, uh, he said, can I have a salad? And he said, what's the difference? <laughs> and he said, it's just a salad. It's not nothing special. And they, they're really rude waiters and stuff like that, but it's so expensive. $15, no, $18 for a Caesar salad. Yeah. And that's be to get one for two or three bucks. Well, you think about it. You go try to buy the ingredients for a salad. It, it would add up to that. It would. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, it's crazy. But I mean, I like, I mean, if I go to a place, I like going to like Applebee's. I don't think Applebee's is that bad. You know? No, they're about the same as they've always been. And they got good dishes, too. Yeah. It's just, uh, 
you know, sometimes like the one here, sometimes it's just yeah. hit or miss, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool, Coda. He said, my neighbor just gave me half a pound, half, I mean, half of an 18 pound salmon. Well, that's all. That's awesome, buddy. That's not bad yeah. at all. Hi, Say, I love salmon. Yeah. Salmon's great. I like ate salmon? it. Yeah. I ate it once and I had some kind of reaction to it. Oh, I'm not sure what it was. I don't think it was it was an allergy because it wasn't doing that. It just uh actually I ate it at an Applebee's. <laughs> oh, you ate Applebee's? Oh no. Yeah, I just uh it was just too fishy for me, you know, and then I've tried to make it and yeah myself and it I just can't I don't know. I just well, can't. they have like well, they have deal that would be like two could die for 22, 22 or something like that. Uh -huh. That's not too bad. I like yeah. the, uh, what's it thing. called? What's it called? The bourbon chicken or street bourbon? What's it called? Yeah, I think it's the street barbecue, the street bourbon chicken or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's bourbon, like good. bourbon, but it's a really tender yeah. piece of um, grilled chicken. And yeah. it, I always get those mashed potatoes with it, and then they put the Ooh. onions and mushrooms on it, and that yeah. is good. Yeah, I love yeah, I like it because it's so. Um, it's just good. It really is. Yeah, and they I mean, pat it like, for some people. I, some people don't like apple juice. Yeah, they mm -hmm. have a long I, time. Yeah. I love their um, too. Their chips and their spinach. You know, yes. like appetizer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's so good. Yeah, now I'm getting hungry. Yeah, I love it. I know, me too. <laughs> I just think. Well, I mean, it's just weird because we end up just talking about food and how expensive it is, and then we talk about what we like about it. Yeah, I remember if I get mashed potatoes, I asked if they put some garlic butter with it. It's really good. With, with what potatoes. now? Oh, yeah. With and you don't yeah. put nothing on it. With the uh, mashed potatoes, they put like garlic butter on it. Yeah. You caught it this morning. Uh -huh. That's cool. That's soft. Yeah, they put the morning. garlic butter on yeah, the. But grilled chicken too you yes. know they grill oh, it with that garlic butter yes. it is yes i'm not big you, fan yeah. of their riblets yeah yeah i had those i mean the one time i liked i did like uh all you can eat riblets you know like chicken tenders <laughs> and stuff i was there for about an hour or so and that video did really well all you can eat riblets and then it was like french fries too mm -hmm. now it's like yeah. i just get too stuck I don't think I. I mean the riblets. They just have like a yeah. little bite on them. I don't. Yeah. I like my ribs better. I'll be honest with you, because yeah. I make some good ribs. But. Yeah. Oh. Oh, they're good, Chevy. They're good. I'm with my good buddy who I'm talking about, Pandora. Yeah, they're good. Good, Chevy. Chevy. Hi, I mean, Chevy. That's weird. yeah, Chevy's really cool. He's the one that's been sending me a lot of stuff. Yeah, I know. That's Very that's awesome. uh, wonderful. I'm I'm glad he's doing that. I'm sure you yeah. appreciate it a lot. I do. I do. I'm the first time I've tried like Italian soda before. It was like a Wadberry. Uh -huh. thing. It was good. I've never yeah, tried anything that like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean. But it would be cool though, like if you could do one of those um, burgers from that place. That would be cool. Those Drakes, you said. Yeah, you'd have to sell yeah. your soul to get one. <laughs> well, yeah, probably. I mean, I've never been to a Drake's before. I mean, I don't even, I never heard of that the first time I heard of it. I like mm -hmm. to try, I mean, there's lots of places I don't have around here. I like to try, I like to try Jollibee's that uh, it's like a, some Filipino type. Yeah, of, isn't uh, that more out west or something though? I think so, but I think there's some around our area, so I think, but I'm not sure. Oh, they're offering up a song here. Oh, that's awesome. Well, they have like, they offer like a spaghetti, but it's a sweeter spaghetti. It has like hot dogs in it or something like that. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, um, like they look like they're the little wieners in the, uh, Benny Weenies. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? I tried it though. Yeah. Jolly Bean looks good. I mean, I tried, I tried the, uh, spaghetti Sabaro. Sabaro's is pretty good, you know? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you had chicken barbecue? Oh, cool. Awesome. For local fire department. Cool. But I couldn't believe, like, I said, like, well, I don't feel like going and trying to beat my record. And someone said, why don't you do a 24-hour live? She goes, oh, my God. I sleeping. did. That's what I was going to tell you, and I forgot. I did oh, really? probably, I think it was, like, in uh, 
2019. Yes. Um, later on uh, in yes. the year. And yes. I did do 24 hours. And I swear to my goodness, Jason, I was crazy uh and we had i hadn't met any of you guys so it was me and some of the girls and stuff like that and some of them came up and and i saw people like three or four times (laughs) like you said they'd leave and come back and then there was a time there was a time um i think of in 21 or the end of 20 that i've done like 11 or 12 you were coming in and out too then yeah you were <laughs> and Howie you was too. yeah 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 well that yeah. one with howie met you and i came with john and said well hey why don't you come up pandora's doing live i was like who's pandora <laughs> i forgot already yeah but that but, was the first uh, time i was on one of your one of your panels uh-huh. well i mean we were just watching I, well howie and i were just watching in a chat we weren't on a panel with uh uh pink lady like and then I yeah i know yeah. Well, you know what, though? It's like when you're mm-hmm. live, don't you feel this way? Yeah. Like when you're live, it flies by. I mean. Yeah, it does. I, I can be on a, a panel and I can talk all day, and <laughs> I guess. And I've been up there forever, you know. But oh, exactly. It just flies by. Wow. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, it's just, I don't know. Oh, you want to know something scary? <laughs> I put, I'm put, it's not going to be up to four o'clock. I guess I had my very first senior citizen so a pop today at <laughs> Wendy's. Because I, yeah, cause I'm 55 now. I had, well, I asked for seniors discount. They said, well, we have a senior drink that's free. That's okay. As I did my first video of that, I was like, oh, this is scary. Was it good? Yeah, it was just a, it was just a diet Coke with no ice. It was a small one though. Yeah, well, better than nothing though. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, they used to have like a discount, though, because my dad used to get a discount of 10%. I guess they did away with that, you know. Probably. At Chick-fil-A, you get a free sandwich. I mean, mm. well, no, for veterans, you get a free sandwich, which is good. I don't know yeah, that's, that's a good food. deal. Yeah. I they mean, it really is because they they've been expensive for a while, Chick-fil-A yeah, has. Expensive. But their, their stuff's really good, you know. Good quality yeah, chicken good. and stuff. Did you know that Wendy's doesn't have like a grilled chicken sandwich anymore? Oh, Remember don't. when they used to have that one and yes. it had like tomato, lettuce, and man, uh, yes. honey mustard? I'd always switch yes. mine to mayonnaise. They don't have one anymore. Oh man, I didn't know that. I remember because they would usually have like grilled or breaded or uh, oh no, grilled or fried. And I yeah. always get I would get, and then they have like regular spicy. I wanted to get spicy. I like their spicy one too, but like um, even at uh, oh god, it just left my mind. Oh well, <laughs> there it went. But you know, it, I and then like McDonald's don't have a grilled chicken sandwich, but I'm just trying to go through because I don't know of anywhere that does except for Chick Fil A now. Burger King here doesn't either. I like grilled chicken mostly. You know. I mean, that would be good. You know. Oh here. Yeah. Here's all the, oh. Hold on, I gotta shrink that back down. Okay, there he is. On the big yeah, who is I'm it? It's yeah, it's sorry. A deuce. It's Deuce. That's my this is Pandora. Hey, Pandora. Well, hi, hi, nice to yeah. meet you. I'm sorry, I had to pop off. Um, girlfriend called, it was it was about an adopter. They they got their um, they were just happy with the puppy they got. I had to stop in Chamber. And we had somebody oh. drive down from Pittsburgh and pick up a puppy, and they yeah. were just thrilled with the little guy. So I'm glad of it. I'm what glad. kind of puppy was it? Oh, it was the the people who surrendered them to us said it was part Roddy and something else, but I don't see it. I saw like maybe Border Collie, and they act <laughs> like they act like herding dogs. The little, they're tiny yeah. little puppies. But what will happen is, is the, the, the two little males, when I walk outside to go feed them on the front porch, they will nip at my heels to try to get me to go in the direction they want me to go. Yeah. So they, they've already got that herding instinct. They, but, well, do you think he would be like a Rottweiler and a pit bull mix? No, no, there's no opinion in it. There's, there's, if they have Roddy in them, the Roddy's very small, a small percentage. Uh-huh. They, they seem like more like a... Um, a Roddy and some kind of working dog, like a, a 
operators have to your border collie because they've got they've got that working dog in here. That's cool. But it's all good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, you know, Well, I think Go ahead. I do, I'm not I don't mean to interrupt you. I just it's got a like on you know, I don't think those dogs I mean like even if you know the ones that do attack people, I think they do it because they've been raised that way. And it gives have. yeah, it gives the breed a bad name because you know, they if they're raised that way, then yeah, they're gonna be that way, you know. But the only time the only time I've ever been attacked by a dog that was not clearly rescued or from a from a work from a um, <clears throat> fighting or bait situation is about I guess it's been like two and a half, three years ago now. We took a couple of dogs from an elderly an elderly couple. The um, husband died. The wife had to go oh, into living. They're both in their late eighties, and we go to their house. And I take the they have a big. It's obviously a pity mix. <clears throat> I walk him around on a leash. He takes treats from me. He wags his tail when he sees me. He, he's real friendly to me and everything. And the, the neighbors walk him around with me. So I'm sitting there, I take 30 minutes to get to know him and everything's great. We put him in the car and he rides in the back of my girlfriend's Mini Cooper and he's fine. He's good. We get to our house and he he's going to kill us. He mauled my hands. I mean, my hands were oh my God. a hamburger. And oh luckily, God. luckily I didn't have any tendon or um, nerve yeah. damage. But I had, to, I had to physically grab that dog and hold him down and put a leash on him and I got I got I got you know my hands just torn up in the doing because he went nuts and he was he was going to kill one of us good he really was and oh my god we wound up having to euthanize him because of that because yeah, you know, yeah. Anything with it. oh great I've got somebody driving for 50 miles an hour in the left lane on the interstate <laughs> oh no <laughs> Well, they're, they're being a jerk about it, too, because they had a tractor trailer behind them. They wouldn't let the tractor trailer get around, so we're having to pass on the right side. But um, that's the only time I've ever had, I know, uh, had to put one down that was in that bad of a situation. You... <clears throat> I know, uh, I've known du uh, the Song of Victor since like 2013. He's been one of my most loyal subscribers. It's so cool seeing people from the old days too coming in. Yeah, I'll be back. Okay, cool. She did our call. She'll be back in a second. That's okay. Okay. But you know, you guys were talking about chicken sandwich. Yeah. Man, I miss, I miss the BK broiler. I yes. just love the BK broiler. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I mean, she said there's not a lot of like grilled, uh, chicken options anymore because they got rid of the grilled chicken option at Wendy's. That's what she was telling me. Yeah. I liked uh <clears throat> you know what I liked? I like that Royal Crispy uh chicken sandwich at uh, Burger King. I think that's right up there with one of the best chicken sandwiches I've ever had. It didn't last I very long. I never, I never did even try it. It was it, no. was, it was gone in my area. Uh, I thought it was delicious. I really liked it though. I really liked it. And there was a couple of things now. They got like that glaze, this spicy glaze or something like that. They have it. I mean, because I had it for the fish sandwich. Now they got it for like a chicken wrap. And then they have a buffalo wrap, which is different. And then they have it on nuggets. So I like to try all those different variations, though. You know. <clears throat> Sometimes I wonder if they have different variations just for food reviewers to get to at least buy them once. You know. Yeah. Hey, did you see Review Bra's latest um, KFC takedown or trash? Oh, which one was that one about the flavored wings or the flavored um, nuggets? I can't remember. It was a couple. It was just a couple, maybe a week or two ago. Yeah, he, he kind of unloaded on him. I mean, he really did. Oh wow! Well, yeah. I mean, he unloaded on. Uh, he did a thing about. Uh, one of the flavors from Popeye's lemon pepper. He sounds like biting into a cough drop. He oh, he God. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the weird thing is, is I got these, uh, this, uh, at Dollar Tree, they have like that wallaby licorice or something like that from Australia. 
Yeah. I got the lemonade. I got the lemonade uh, licorice. It tastes like lemon lemon cough drops. So it tastes like medicine. Oh, it's horrible. That that wall is terrible. Yeah. I can't stand it. Oh, I mean, you had that Wallabies licorice before at Dollar Tree? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like it. My mom does, but that, you know, whatever. My mom has odd taste in some things, but I, I get it for her when I go there sometimes if I see it, but I don't care for it. I mean, I was just weird. I never had it before. I think I had that and I, maybe I got one other flavor or I had another flavor. I can't remember. I mean, it's like, if a licorice, eh. But no, I'm, uh, yeah, I wasn't too fond of that lemon stuff. You like black licorice? No, not even a little bit. Never have. Oh. Uh, I used, I used to hate it as a kid, but I mean, I don't mind it that much now. But kind of like Jägermeister. But I mean, I'm not like gonna rush out and buy it. I mean, as a kid, I used to hate that stuff. Just like dark chocolate. As a kid, I hated that. That uh, we used to get like those. Um, oh, what's that? Those uh, Hershey's Minis, the collectibles ones that had like little things. It'd be like Hershey's, Crackle, Mr. Goodbar, and uh, the Hershey's Dark. Like little yeah, teeny, special, tiny special, candy. special dark, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't mind them now, but as a kid, I couldn't stand them. I don't want time. I've been in a while, I almost threw up. It was terrible. When I was a kid, I, I always took the dark. I always took dark chocolate or milk chocolate any day. I, still, oh, I, still I mean, I didn't like it. I still don't I care didn't like it. that much. That's oh, I love milk chocolate. I mean, I love those other ones. I just did not like the dark chocolate one at all. And that's the one no one would eat. Or just like we'd get Neapolitan ice cream. And then, no, I mean, I would just be like the chocolate. And they eat vanilla and they leave the strawberry behind. Why well, don't just get like strawberry and, and chocolate instead of getting all three flavors? No one ate the strawberry. You know? I was at I was at strawberry before I, I never I never did care for chocolate ice cream. It was just too sweet to me. Oh, I, I love know. chocolate. Oh, I love chocolate. I mean that was a thing. But I mean I, I would rather prefer well I like chocolate ice cream and I found out about like uh Sherbert and I found out about sorbet and I like those both better, you know. I like three flavors. Oh, they had something that grossed me out though. Well, you know how they have weird I mean I think John bought me a thing of like pickled flavored ranch, ranch dressing for Hill and Valley Ranch, which I didn't think was that bad. Guess what yeah. they have now? They got cheese it flavored ranch dressing. That sounds awful. Ranch dressing to me is terrible anyway, though. I, I've never cared. Oh, you don't it. like ranch? No. Well, I, I remember it, they. It, it, oh, wow. me, me ranch dressing smells like sour milk that's been run through old socks. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what that's what that uh, that ranch soda my sister bought me tasted like. It tasted like moldy water. I remember Howie Cat. I, I got messages getting the pan, when Pandora comes back. What Howie Cat? I don't know if you remember Howie Cat from Will yeah, Channel. Channel. He yeah. passed away though. Yeah, he passed away sadly. But he would say ranch is not a flavor. Ranch is a place where cows go to poop. That I thought was yeah, funny. That's about right. It's but awesome. a lot of times back. Yeah, but back in the day, ranch used to be like the number one salad dressing. Now it's like I hear more people saying they hate it. They, used to, I mean, people used to say they love ranch all the time. You know, back in the day. When, now when it's I was, like, when I was a yeah. little kid, when I was a little kid, it was like it was like when you went to a salad bar. Yeah. There, there was a local, there was a local steakhouse. Yeah. A kid called Quincy's. They were all over the yeah. southeast. They, they were out of yes. northern North Carolina. Yeah. And yeah. Quincy's. Quincy's had their big salad board. They called the called the family salad board, and yeah. um, I would always, I would always make a salad when I was a little kid. It would be lettuce, a little bit of tomato, a little bit of ham, croutons, and Thousand Island. I would use Thousand Island. Yeah. Kid. Oh man, but, it's uh, weird. You, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I I want to try new KFC sauces. Uh. I'm not really that big on blue cheese, but I mean, I remember you mentioned Quincy's. I went to Quincy's one one time in Fort uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I liked it real well. I liked the rolls they had there. I yeah, mean, I went there two two or three times. Yeah, that that was the thing because one time, like in 1992, for yeah. a little while, yeah, my, my first ex wife and I both worked at Quincy's at the same time, and oh, wow. my, my ex wife. Had, they, they had her put on the big fat yeast roll costume and go outside and dance around in front of the restaurant for a little bit. 
I just, oh, really? Yeah, I heard it. We could pay her off seven, eight bucks an hour, which, in, you know, 1992, that was like double minimum wage to yeah. do it. But I, I mean, I waited tables, though. I was a waiter. And, you know, I made okay money at it at the time. But what was good was we got a, um, you got one free meal per shift. And you can either go okay. to the country sideboard and get get one plate off the country sideboard, or you could have a ham, you could have a cheeseburger and fries, and then the steak fries, yeah. or chopped steak and steak fries. Well, yeah. I, would, I would always I would always get the chopped steak because yeah, the that's, steak, that's what I would get. It was yeah. always really really good. And back then, Quincy's they had a butcher that would come in three times a week and cut up a side of beef back in the back in the cold room. So yeah. what whatever, whatever ground meat they had. The ground, the ground meat was was whatever he had that was left over as trimmings from butchering a fresh side of beef. So it was incredible. Oh wow, that sounds good. But I mean, where where was that? You were at Quincy's because I went. It was outside Fort Bragg when I went to Quincy's. Yeah, this, this, we this, to... this, this was south of Birmingham. You know, there, there were a big. There were at one point okay. there were a big chain in the southeast. They were all over the place. But like okay. by the late nineties, they had um, changed hands. Because at one point, Quincy's and Hardy's were owned by the same company. and But but by the late 90s, they really just started shutting down a lot of them. I guess they just had lost other competitors. You know, that was back when everybody wanted to go to O'Charlie's or Outback or yeah. Applebee's or places like that where they could get a drink. You know, Quincy's, yeah. Quincy's they, they didn't have alcohol because it was a family restaurant. So they, they, yeah. they, didn't, they never served alcohol. And by the 90s, it seemed like a lot of people wanted to go where they could go have a you know the the little one dollar apple teenies like at you know, yeah. Applebee's or whatever. So you know, I guess it just kind of that and the fact that they changed hands so many times. I guess it kind of hurt their business model. Wow. Well, we did go. I mean, it's weird you went to Quincy. I always mention Quincy's. No one's ever heard of them before. You're the first one to ever mention that place. Yeah. But, I mean, I went to two all over times. The yeah. I mean, I always think of, I mean, when I first met you, I always think of, like, the show, the Jack Clubman show, you know? But no, I mean, I mean, was that as popular as, like, Ponderosa, or I can't remember? I'd say on a regional basis, probably more so, because, like, yeah. every, at one point, every small and medium town in the South had a Quincy's in it, because, honestly, Quincy's was kind of the place where people went after church or, you know, on Friday, Saturday yeah. night or whatever for family dinners. And that, they were just everywhere. They were, they really were, because you know, there's like a lot of I, I can name at least a half dozen old Quincy buildings that are still around that I see regularly. Oh, cool. What, I mean, one of them is a Chinese restaurant and, and market. One of them, oddly enough, is a, is a pornography and sex toy shop. Um, oh wow! Yeah, yeah. It's just, um, and then some of some of them honestly are just abandoned. The, there's 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 one wow. near me that used to be a Chinese restaurant. The Chinese restaurant yeah. went out of business about went out of business. I guess about nine ten years ago, nothing ever took it on. So it's it's just a big empty building. But well, I remember yeah, like yeah, Quincy's was a big deal. It was a big deal in the South for a while. Yeah, I mean, well, I went to. I mean, I never heard. I went there like two or three times. And I liked it. Uh, I remember they had. Uh, well, that our burger chef is now like some uh, chiropractor place, you know. Yeah. And like, well, I mean, we went by a couple of bit of Red Barn. One was like flood shut down, and then that one was the uh was a Pizza Hut, and then Pizza Hut shut down in a college town. And it made no sense because they shut down right after John Wildwood's burnt down. It took them a couple of years to come back. You know how much money they would have made because John Wildwood was like the main competitor. And they were stayed open a couple more years. Well, got a ton of business. Yeah, it really depends on if it was a franchise or a corporate owned. Because yeah, it's franchise. Yeah, because of a, a buddy of mine that I've known for like thirty plus years, he used to manage a Pizza Hut back in the early nineties, and he quit yeah. because um, Pepsi they did away with uh, they did away with the incentive bonuses that they used to give managers. All right. So, so he quit. Because they just there was no incentive to, to do a lot. Because when you take away the incentive bonuses and put the managers just on base yeah. salary, well, 
people. I mean, you're working like 60 hours a week for not a lot of money. So he just wound up turning, he turned in his notice and found another job. And, and at the time, he had one of the one of the most profitable pizza huts in the Birmingham area. Ooh. Uh, he, told, he told me where he really lost money on pizza. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. I don't know yet, Chevy. I mean, I got some, uh, I used to have some uh, Wendy's half. I, I went into Wendy's and Walmart really early today with my sister and stuff. I still have a little bit of uh, Wendy's seat. I don't know. I'm stuffed right now. What'd you get at Wendy's? I got uh, I got, I got a breakfast bacon. Egg. Well, my sister right, my sister ordered a sandwich, and she said she don't want an egg on it. And I asked, I asked if they just put her egg on one of my break on uh, my breakfast baconator and they did that and i got like a large uh potato uh think about seed potatoes i got like a breakfast burrito yeah. and the breakfast burrito is pretty huge that's like 485 89 that's not too bad because it's really big and then the breakfast bacon is like 489 too but i like i think the breakfast is quite good I stopped. I stopped at Wendy's after I took. I had to take a take a load of dogs to our veterinarian to get their yeah. get their get their health certificates before we went to Rhode Island, Pennsylvania. And I I just yeah. I already had I already had a drink in the van, so I just got an order of the um, seasoned potatoes for breakfast, and they were really good. I mean, it was it was it was enough to it was enough to tide me over until lunch. So I was yeah. I, was happy. I think I paid like just a little bit over two dollars for an order of seasoned potatoes. But really, with Wendy's, I wish they would keep their seasoned potatoes as an option all day long because they're pretty darn good. Yeah, they are good. Well, I mean, I got a large, uh, I think a large seasoned potatoes were like two forty nine now. That's not they bad. Too horrible. No, that's not bad at all. And then my, what well, something I should have got because I never reviewed it before was they have French toast sticks, and it was like a thing of four for two ninety nine, which is I don't think it's too horrible, you know. It's still a little pricey, though. But, I mean, she got it from one of my grandnieces. Let's see if she'd eat them. I don't know if she did or not. I'm not sure about that, though. My girlfriend likes, um, oddly enough, she likes um, the croissant, which from Burger King for breakfast. Yeah. So a yeah. lot of times, if we're driving together, I, I have to compromise and yeah. you know, go to Burger King because I want her to eat. She's, she just doesn't eat enough. I mean, yeah. she's probably Wait, one twenty. Oh wow! But no, I do love Burger King's. I love the croissant sandwich at Burger King and those little, like, uh, those little tater tot things they have. I think they're delicious. But and that one breakfast, yeah. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, that one they had a breakfast burrito. I think a small one that was delicious. So it was really good. But well, I like your croissant sandwiches real well. She got she got a bacon egg and cheese croissant. She got their yeah. their French got their French toast sticks. And I yeah. think I just got, I got whatever their their sausage and egg breakfast sandwich was. Yeah. It wasn't on it was something else. But anyway, they're the the BK fruit French toast sticks. They were I don't know they were disposable. I wound up giving okay. them some of the dogs on back because I just they just weren't that good. But I've I've never. I mean, you know, you take a piece of, of bread and deep fry it. You know, dip it in syrup. It's just yeah. You know, most of the time they're overcooked. Honestly. Oh yeah. I mean, I thought it'd be interesting to do it for the uh, review eventually. I know some place, some Wendy's, they have sausage, gravy, and biscuits. I would love to try that. I would love to try that. But we don't. they don't offer it here at where we're at. Well, there's they're funny because there's a dividing line that yeah. I've noticed with breakfast where it's, it's about, I guess it's probably um, Pennsylvania, where when you go north of Pennsylvania, you, they don't serve biscuits anymore. They just serve bagels. Like, really? uh, yeah, like McDonald's. McDonald's, all they have are the McMuffins or bagels when you get north of Pennsylvania. Yeah, wow. I mean, they still have the, um, oh, like the, what do you call those things? The McGriddle, I guess. The McGriddles that are like the weird little pancake waffle sandwiches that are pretty Yeah, McGriddles, yes. Yeah, and um, but you can either get a McGriddle, a yeah. bagel, a bagel, or, a, or a, um English muffin. There's not anything else left. 
Oh shit, that's cool. How you doing, Coda? Good, Jay. Yeah. Oh, awesome. This is my buddy, the son of Victor. Oh, you call him Deuce. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I've known him for a long uh, time. Deus Sol Invictus. Yeah, Deus Sol Invictus. Yeah. God's cool son. Yeah, you can call him yeah, the un- call him the Deuce if you want. The unconquered sun god rises every morning. The sun god, yeah. yeah. What's Invictus yeah. mean? Unconquered. Conquered. Yeah, yeah, okay. Un- un- unconquered. Unconquered. Yeah. Unconquered yeah. sun god. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Very Latin. It's a bit spell. It's a bit spell though, but I mean, I'm used to spelling it now. I like putting them on my uh, titles. I like putting the people around my panels on in the titles of the live streams and stuff. You know. So how have you been, Coda? Oh, I. Well, it's been a good morning. That guy gave me that salmon. That's awesome. And that that salmon, it's like. I don't know, three hours old. Yeah, I'm ready. See, like, we literally just that. got it this morning. So, oh, that's, that's good. awesome. That's good eating, all, too. all filleted and everything. Mm. That helps too with the omega fatty three acids. Yeah, no, that's all I said to it. Like, the guy, this is a really cool dude. I don't know. He's, he's taking yeah. an interest in my health. But I was oh, like, awesome. oh, yeah, doctor said I need more omega threes. And, and, uh, oh, he goes, oh, okay. And then he just comes back, and he's got this fucking gigantic salmon, right? He goes, there you go. There's your omega-3s. That's cool. He, he's awesome. And that's like- I'm, I'm fucking- he's, do you know, what, you know what a libertarian is? Yep. Jason? Yes. Like, he's like that. Yeah. Like, he's sort of like, fuck the government, fuck taxes. Oh, he's yeah. like that. So he's got hookups for everything, right? Oh, wow. That's cool. Like, he was just... He was just saying, hey, man, I can hook you up with a box of plastic straws. Like, they're illegal yeah. in Canada, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah sure, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, plastic, yeah, plastic straws right. are illegal. They're illegal in Rhode Island now. And oh, they are? I, yeah. Damn. I do, and I do animal rescue, so occasionally I'll stop off after I drop off animals at their doctors. Yeah. If, I don't, if I don't have a, a canned or bottled drink on the truck, I'll go to like a Burger King or whatever and get a drink. Those damn paper straws come apart in your mouth after about 20 minutes if you don't drink your drink immediately. Yeah. Oh, it's it's not even that. It's like five minutes. They suck. They suck. And what good? What and what good is is doing away with a plastic straw going to do to the damn environment? I, I mean, know how much how much extra energy does it how much extra energy and and acetone and everything else does it take to make that damn paper straw that that wasn't there before when you just had plastic straws? I know. Well, they 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 they're just mad because turtles would get them like up. Well, not turtle turtle, but I mean the yeah, sea life would get them like up their nose and stuff. That that was a big deal, you know. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's all mis- it's all misdirection. They say, okay, yeah. we're banning plastic straws yeah. because we're all about the environment, but they're not yeah. about the environment. They're just about no. they're keeping people controlling whatever. Yep. Yeah. Controlling behavior. That's all they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not it's not even that. They're just giving these sort of bullshit kind of things and saying we're doing something, but they're yeah. not really. It infuriates me. <laughs> Well, they're just trying to make people more miserable, you know. Just like when they got rid of the McDLT because of the styrofoam containers. The McDLT, that was a damn good sandwich from McDonald's. That's a long time ago. Yeah, I know. I was going to that. Well, that that's, that's like how, twenty-five yeah, was, years ago. Yeah, I used to love those in AIT. Now, those are so good. Uh, and they make a big deal because all the styrofoam stuff. Like they still use styrofoam, you know. Yeah, I still well, I remember well, those days. Well, if you get if you get takeout from a grocery store or from a mom and pop restaurant, it's going to be in a styrofoam clamshell anyway. I mean, yeah. what's the big freaking hairy deal? Because McDonald's had styrofoam. I, I know. Think, I think Burger King always used paper, wax paper, but yeah, McDonald's had styrofoam, and I think Hardee's, Hardee's, and Carl's Jr. used to have styrofoam as well. Yeah, but the styrofoam kept the sandwich warm until you got home. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I like how they had a kept the 
hot side hot and a cool side cool. Yeah, but they put the cheese on the cool side, so you had cold ass cheese on your hot ass sandwich. Well, yeah, well, that's true. Well, I that usually was, wouldn't get it without cheese, though. That's just me, though. That was idiotic. Yeah. Yeah. N none of this makes sense. You know, I, wa I wanted to get a couple buns, right? Yeah. From the grocery store. And the only thing I could buy was a six pack of buns in this gigantic plastic crate. I'm like, I don't fucking need this plastic thing, you know? Yeah. I don't know. There's 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 also overpackaging of of shit drives me crazy too. I don't know why yeah. everything has to be put in a big plastic clamshell and yeah. Like, ooh. Well, you can't, okay. can't breathe okay. on it. If they yeah. really wanted to save on the plastic, why yeah. not just have great big drums of liquid detergent at the grocery store or at the retail store? You take your container back, you refill your you refill the plastic jug. They give you a 20%, 20, 10, 10 or 20% discount for doing it. And that way you just use the same jug over and over again until you finally just throw it away instead of having to buy new jugs every damn time and create more garbage. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that Simple. makes more sense, exactly. more logical. That would actually save some plastic. Yeah. Like if if I get a coffee from somewhere, right? I usually yeah. use the cup about four or five times after that. I'll just keep using oh. it as a coffee cup until it wears yeah. out, right? Because yeah. I'm like, fuck, it's just waste, right? My girl, yeah. my girl, my girlfriend and I re we reuse the great big styrofoam cups from convenience stores. Yeah, because all, we reuse them because they keep they keep your ice and your green cold. And there's no reason not to, because if you went and bought an insulated mug, well, hell's bells, you're going to have to pay 10, 15 bucks for a decent one. So I'll just, I'll just reuse the um, insulated cup until it wears out, and then I'll toss it. I, what do you mean styrofoam? What do you mean insulated? I've never seen such a thing. We, okay, here in America, they did, okay, they did away with styrofoam at McDonald's. That was a voluntary thing, or maybe a state by state. Yeah. But if you go to, say, a Circle K or 7-Eleven, a big chain convenience store, the cups are going to be styrofoam for your fountain drinks. And what we do really? is... Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And instead of tossing it, we just reuse ours until they until they break or tear up because, you know, we stand well, wash and reuse them because they keep the drink cold for really well. Oh, we don't have that. We have, like, plastic cups yeah. at the 7-Eleven. Not styrofoam, not insulated. Yeah. I have styrofoam That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. I'd be saving those things up. Just, you know, make a margarita, put it yeah. in the styrofoam cup. Hell yeah. Hey, Richard. Time to bring back whaling and oil. And whale oil. Yeah, exactly. Whale. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I Bagman is super expensive, too. We talk about stuff. They're still whaling. Yeah. Well, they used to have... Yeah. They have everything besides meat trade. Wow. I, I don't think I don't think there's any styrofoam... I don't remember the last time I've seen a styrofoam container here, to be honest. They're all paper. Well, it's funny because it's, it's it's just a selective thing in the United States. You can't have plastic straws, but you can have styrofoam cups in some states. It just it's just none of it makes any sense. It's just so selective and targeted and random and you know. Yep. But, you know, I mean, the thing is, is that if you, like you can't have it both ways, you can't have like an easy consumer culture where you can just get this stuff, you know, immediately and prepared and not have waste. Right. Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're a waste driven culture just by the nature of being consumer culture. Yeah. We so, are. I mean, that's really what it is. If, you know, when the dictator finally comes and wants to get real fucking environmental, there'll just be no more fucking 7-Elevens, right? Yeah, there will be no more nothing. Well, you will eat, the, you will eat the corn from the field. 
Yes. Some states are like Oregon. Oregon is targeting small farms. Oregon has oh, made it hard. Oh, yeah, Oregon state government has made it almost impossible to be a large gardener or a small farmer. And, I, and that includes, like, um, growing your own food or livestock or any of it. They, pass these, they pass these draconian uh, system of water restrictions. And I'm not talking about restrictions on, on, like, tap water. I mean restrictions on rainwater catchment and everything else. You, I mean, yeah, that's... I mean, they're trying that's to take, always a bad sign. They're trying to take over people's yeah. individual wells and ponds and everything else. Yeah, that's bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I've got to bow out of here. i got to stop. i got to make a gas stop while I'm driving. I may catch up later. If not, you guys have a great afternoon. Uh, you too, buddy. You too. Cool, man. Awesome. I'm glad you got that salmon, though. That's awesome. I'll save you some money too. This this guy hey, is everything, man. Yeah. This That's is the guy nice who's like, food. oh. This guy's like, hey, you want, you know, you want 60 morphine pills? You want fucking <laughs> he uh <laughs> he gets me he gets me, you know how much he charges me for a pack of cigarettes? How much? Five bucks. Five bucks. Well, it's cheaper than and they're, they're normally they're normally yeah. 20 here. Yeah. All yeah, kinds of can. shit like that. Yeah, that's awesome. He's like that. He's the he's the friend everyone wants. And he's like, he's my age. And he just wants to like hang out and fucking play video games and shit. Like it's kind of cool. Oh, and he's got a boat, so cool. maybe I'll maybe I'll go fishing with him. Oh, that'd be great. I mean, it's weird though, because like today I had like my first senior citizen drink. I'm, I'm that age now, you know. That What's that? Food juice? It was free though, which is good. I, oh, yeah, I see. Like, uh, Discount. Well, I mean, like a pop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at Wendy's, you know, I had the yeah senior discount. Now I'm 55. I guess I qualify now. And they said we just have senior yeah. drinks, so I got free. Uh, I got free diet coke. So oh, weird. really? Yeah. Drink, so I'm up there. There's nothing like that here. No one gives a shit if you're over 55. Yeah. They don't care if you're over 65. Oh, they don't do any better. No, no there's nothing like that here. Like that? No, veterans? No. No, no. That's That, I think, is a purely American thing. The veteran worship. Oh, okay. Here, they yeah. just fucking well, they, forget I mean, they even exist. But we don't do anything. We don't lose yeah. soldiers in battles and stuff. We're like yeah. laundry people and supply and whatever yeah. at best. Yeah. Very few fighters. Yeah, quartermaster. Yeah. I mean, that's the way it, just the way it is, I guess, you know. Uh, I was Signal Corps when I did mine, you know. But I mean, What's it's that? weird because I always forget to ask. Uh, Signal Corps, like, I helped send uh, messages back and forth. Uh, oh, like oh, They would give you, like, I mean, this was, yeah, communicate. And they would give you, like, like I said, it was a long time ago. They We have, like, uh, Messages on reel to reels, and then they, you go through this one, and then it'll just transport right to uh, right, right to the paper, and then send it out to like different companies and stuff like that when they come to pick it up. It was different, but I mean, they, they all that's outdated. Wow, uh, that's old school, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that was real to real uh, from like 87 to 90. Yeah, real to real. And sometimes they have one hmm. with cassettes too. And that one that was spin off like that. Oh, too, 1987. Like Jesus. Yeah. So you enlisted when you were basically when you came of age, I guess. Because you must have been 87. Yeah, you mean, were like 17 or something. 18. I was I was 18. I was 18, almost 19 though. Because my birthday was like December, uh in December. So I was almost like hmm. about like a month and a half away from uh, being 19. Yeah, out of high school. <laughs> I mean, I was, well, I was, I mean, I went there like, and I enlisted like in, what was it, July of, uh, July, but I was put on like that, um, uh, what was it, delayed entry program. So I didn't have a space for me. So I was, I, you know, I didn't do anything like four and a half months and then I went in. After that, so you did you catch any of the first Gulf War? 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm a Desert Storm veteran, yeah. But that didn't happen. Yeah, that didn't start, that was, yeah, that didn't start coming to fruition uh, till like, the end of Germany. And then I got home. I was home for, like, 35 days. And I didn't know if things would resolve itself. I went right to Fort Bragg. And that was, like, the main place where people got deployed and stuff. However, they needed me on post. But the stuff I did on post was directly related to uh, the Gulf War because I helped uh, when we sent, like, messages back and forth that went right to them, you know. And at one night, that uh, there was something wrong with the one of their, uh, with some of the equipment on their side, right? And I'd stay up all night with a guy trying to fix it and stuff. Or, like, give them information and stuff. It was different. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that, I'm fascinated. I, I I'm fascinated by the U.S. military, to be honest. Yeah. Even like their history and their sort of a lot of their motivate their motivations and stuff. Very yeah. bizarre, especially in the in like the 50s and 60s and in the 70s. Yeah, like their whole their whole yeah uh, philosophy behind recruitment. They had they had nothing to do with. Uh, very little to do with like protect the fucking country. It had to do with uh, yeah. social engineering because there was like all oh, these yeah. rural rural kids with no education, and and yeah. they thought, well, fuck, we'll just get them in the army and we'll try to train them up and educate them and whatever, so they don't end up, you know, a burden on society. But oh, yeah. uh, and then I think it kind of worked, and then they just gave up on that. Then they're like, yeah. fuck it, we're just going to invade everybody now. Yeah, well, they don't do that drafting thing anymore. Oh, you're welcome, Chevy. Thank you for your service. And then, well, look what Tam said. Canadian doesn't drop uh, bombs on innocent non-combatants. Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't even know if we have any bombs, really. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't count on us helping out anybody. I, I think the only yeah. thing Canada's ever really been involved with is uh, Cyprus. To yeah. any, any degree. With Cyprus, they did some police actions there. But uh, that's it. I mean, we're we're the Canadian army is probably weaker than the Nigerian army or the Kenyan army, the Kenyan army. I mean, so it's kind of yeah. a joke. Yeah, don't tell Gordon that. Gordon will be all up in arms with you. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the army well, I mean, is what it is. I mean, I I honestly think like I don't know how you think like. Real, like, I mean, when you talk about military, you got to talk about the United States, yeah. basically, right? But yeah, uh, I think a lot of it, and I don't even know if, like, kind of Trump hint, hinted at it that you just pull out of all these other fucking countries and quit, tr- you know, quit trying to fuck with other yeah. nations, yeah. yeah, really. And it's all business interests, but just back off of that shit and then take all these fucking army guys who just sit basically sitting around doing nothing and yeah. get them to fix the fucking bridges that are collapsing and the fucking you know, just infrastructure yeah. work and shit like that. Like just whatever, yeah. plant a tree, gives a fuck, right? Yeah. But I think it's a good system. It's a good system yeah. because, you know, the, um, like life isn't fair, right? Not everybody's yeah. going to be yeah. the fucking top of the class fucking, you know, straight A student, yeah. you know, whatever, Harvard. You, not every, very few people are going to be that actually, right? Yeah. And there's going to be people from very poor backgrounds who have no fucking guidance or whatever. And then they hit that age, like 18 or whatever. And if you look around today, you just see these people, these kids fucking walking around. They don't know what the fuck they're doing with their life. So even if it's something like, it's sure it's the army, it's run by the fucking military, but you're, it's like, it's domestic and you're just doing shit and taking orders. Right. Yeah, exactly in getting some sort of an education or at least a little direction. I think it's, I think it's good for that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, some people don't even want to do that anymore, you know, or like, yeah. Like, no. I heard, I heard that thing where they were like, uh, I don't like, I don't know what I believe anymore, but um, something like the army said, Oh, you know, it's not, um, it's not, it's not proper for us to like be barking orders at people and and stuff like this and making them salute, and it's sort of like, well, that's the whole fucking point. Wow. Like they're trying to baby it down so much that it's like, well, what the fuck is it then? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if you were in the army and they're like, oh no, you don't have to salute, you don't have to like, you know, 
stand to attention when someone tells you to, right? Just do whatever. Fucking well, madness. That's how, well, that's how parents, I mean, not about saluting, that's how parents are with their kids. They let their kids do whatever they want. Yeah, There's that's no, the problem. Like, punishment anymore, ain't like that. They do, yeah. You don't want to and do the school work. Oh, well, yeah. Yep. You know? And you know what happens is those kids, because they don't have any fucking idea of what's going on or guidance or direction or any connection to the larger society, they're just going to say, oh, fuck it. And then they're going to knock up their girlfriend when they're 18 and fuck. And then, then we got, a, now we got a generation of wild children. Oh, uh, definitely. Unhinged. Unhinged swing from the ropes and the trees and shit. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big believer that, uh, um, <laughs> in like selective uh, procreation, like I don't think every I I don't think I think you should be having you should have to demonstrate that you have twenty thousand dollars in the bank saved up. Yeah. Like you have to have some money, you have to have a job, right? You got you got to be able to demonstrate that you are can look after a kid before, and then you apply for a license, and then you can have a child. And if you don't. Uh, if you break the law and you have a kid uh, illegally, then you should be sterilized. They had a movie. Called, I remember there was an old movie about sterilization, right? Um, shit, I can't remember what it was called. It was an old. It was an old exploitation film. Like, I guess really, like this family kept having babies that were either like, uh, uh, what do you call? It? They couldn't. They had like a the facts where they're criminals and stuff and uh i think they they were trying to get the mother to have a have her tubes tied and he said why don't you get the father uh and the father's like well that's a good idea you should have your tubes tied or well we need to have you uh I give you a second to do hell with that i ain't doing that shit it was it was really a funny movie though i can't remember. that sounds weird I don't you know in canada for it though, a long time it's on youtube you know in canada for a little yeah, while for a little while, they were paying um, like crackheads and shit like yeah. that. They were paying them, I think it was three or five thousand dollars to get their tubes yeah. tied, and they did it for a few years. But oh, then, really? then people freaked out. They said, "You can't do that." Let me see if I can find out what that. That was Trudeau is. too, who yeah. came up with that. The guy's a fucking weirdo. But I think that's a good idea. Hey, you know, if you. No, yeah, forced yeah. sterilization. A lot of forced sterilization. Build a fucking 900-foot yeah. wall around America and start sterilizing immediately. Yeah. A nice fucking 40K future. It was on fucking... Yeah. That show yeah. sounds interesting, if you ever remember what it is. I've seen it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I think it's Tomorrow's Children. I know, let me Let me double Tomorrow. check. Really? I think it's tomorrow's children. I can send it to you on uh, this. Like, is it a is it a shitty it's movie? Like Fifty three minutes. Let me double check. I believe Fifty three minutes. Uh, it's real low budget, black and white. Thirty four. It's like uh, okay. tomorrow's children. Not free download. It's like you know, like Reefer Madness. It's like that. Yeah. Oh, it's like a social guidance scare movie. If you like Morals Children, Madison, 1934? Like is it really yeah, fucking old? I mean, I mean yeah, I can I can send it to you on Discord. Yeah. I, God, I, there's I don't have Discord anymore. Minutes, I'm not rid of it. I thought I enjoyed it. I'm weird. Hey, don't I'm send me anything on Discord content. if you still see, Jason, don't send me anything on Discord if you see me there because I've deactivated my thing. I'm off Discord now. Oh, oh yeah, here we go. Nineteen thirty-five. Okay. The tomorrow's children slash yeah. the unborn. It's tomorrow's Fuck. children right there. That's a movie that needs a remake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. That looks well, that I looks mean, bizarre. I'm gonna put, I'm, I'll put that on the list. <laughs> There's so I I've seen so many crazy movies like that like that ilk right there, you know, and they're very entertaining. My dad said, "What?" A, my dad said. Why the hell you come up with these movies and stuff? I I enjoyed it it's a lot. It's funny. I I thought it was a great well, no, movie. It's not only that. Yeah. Like these these weird old movies, even like Reefer Madness yeah. or whatever. 
it's yeah. it's kind of like whatever they're they're dumb and goofy but you can sense yeah. that whoever made the yeah. movie really believed this i like, crazy idea or whatever right yeah but i love that yeah if, if some well, an, an, an honest Adam's filmmaker great. yeah yeah well he did the cocaine feed the cocaine feed a little more depressing <laughs> and i remember they had marijuana the marijuana they had marijuana they, they were like some I don't know, like this girl singing it looked like Minnie Pearl. And I like that they had like rat wallpaper. It was really bizarre. Minnie Pearl. Really strange. Yeah, it looked like Minnie Pearl. I don't think it was her though. It was really weird. I seen a ton of movies like that. But it, what did what did Minnie Pearl used to always say? How yeah. well, howdy. Yeah. And then she'd have a howdy. Yeah. I remember that from Hee Haw. Ages back. Yeah, who, who's mean, who's the guy on Eha? Who's the dude, oh, the uh, kind of bigger guy? A uh, Roy Clark. Roy Clark. Roy Clark. Yeah. I saw him playing it like he was actually a classical musician it, originally, and oh, really? I saw him playing a classical guitar. Holy fuck, is he good? Well, like I Spanish, mean, heard... almost like flamenco. Real oh, good. Man. Well, Roy, seen, I, uh, who thinks of Roy Clark, right? But fuck, he's yeah, like I very, mean, very respected musician. Yeah, I mean, well, it's like weird. people don't, don't take like we, with Weird Al and stuff. He's very respected in music, and he can make Grammys all the time because he's able to take a spoof of a song and make it into something that you know gets recognized. You know, and it's not always that easy. Well, though, but yeah, I, but I mean, if if the yeah. famous song. His original songs suck. Yeah. He's yeah. good at he does the parodies well. Yeah. Well, I like Christmas at Ground Zero. That one too bad. Did you like UHF? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Christmas at Ground Zero. No, bad. not really. I th I don't know. People say, oh, UHF, and I don't know. I was like, it's it was okay. it's goofy. Well, I know Mark said he hated him for what he did with uh that song you dared to be stupid because he said he like took everything and made it so succinct. And then Mark said he kind of hated him for it, you know. On a, well, he was joking. Mark. He was joking when he said oh, that. I figured he was. I figured he was. Yeah, he was saying, like, yeah, basically fucking weird Al boiled down yeah. the whole Devo thing to two minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of true. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, that's great. I've never been in cult activities before, not that I know of, Chevy. Or not that I can say. <laughs> I just know a bunch of weird stuff. But no, I think you'll like that Tomorrow's Children. That's really good. There's some really nutty, nutty movies out there. I gotta think of some other ones. But they made all these socially conscious movies, and they would play them at like burlesque houses and stuff. Just like you ever saw, mm -hmm. like um, what's that one guy that did? Who did? I mean, they was one guy did the original uh, Maniac, not the uh the Joe Spinell movie, the old one. It was like a take on uh the black not multiple from, uh... yes. No, not multiple maniac. No, that's John Waters. But I know Maniac <laughs> from a long to like the 39 or something, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Who is that supposed to be? Ed Gein? No, no, Maniac was supposed to be what like a that? take on uh the black cat back then. No. Edward Almer or something that directed that one. Ugh, well, no, okay. that, well, uh, Ed Gein was like taking off on Psycho and then like Texas Chainsaw Massacre and stuff. But Maniac was like a long I don't time think ago. I've seen Maniac. Then, uh, okay. Well, the newer one in, in 1980 was Joe Spinell and uh, Carolyn Monroe. And then um, they remade that one with Elijah Woods, which is really good. And that one, they would like scalp women and stuff, like in Gruesome Tooth in the Hershgorn Lewis movie. He would scalp women and oh, stuff. Yeah. And then he put women. all these mannequins. Yeah, and then he put them on these mannequins, and the mannequins would come to life and fuck with them. So it's really weird. But Joe Spinell was Joe Spinell was really good in that movie. That's one of like uh, Tom Savini's uh, masterworks. Hmm. You know what? You know what? I yeah, like, right. I don't know, maybe you're the same. I like going to archive.org and looking up the old social guidance films and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I remember seeing one, I and it was, uh, 
I think it was it was an ad for some. It, wow, it was a little smoothie, but I, it was really an ad for something like Valium or something, right? And it was all about how you can convince your fucking irritating, nagging wife to get on these fucking drugs, so she'll <laughs> shut up and <laughs> leave you alone. It was fucking insane, man. And then it showed her like yeah. all relaxed yeah. in a chair, and you're like, "What the yeah. fuck, man?" I they do the same thing today. I they're just not so. They're a little more subtle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I mean, I used to, they used to have like Alpha Delta Alpha Delphi videos. You'd have a whole bunch of these ones. Let me see. Mm. You. Uh, I can't remember um, which, which ones. See if I can find some, because I, I've seen a whole bunch of them. But like those social guidance types movies, like Tomorrow's yeah. Children and stuff, like the old exploitation stuff. Oh, I got one for you. Uh, it's I think it's okay. called ABCs of Sex Education for Trainables. Have you heard of this one? Oh, really? I know. So I know it's like, like it. it's like I don't know. I think it's from the seventies. And uh, it's basically yeah. a film. I don't know who it's for, but uh, it's on like how to train people with like mentally retarded people, such sex education. Oh, really? <laughs> it's uh, oh, man, it's it's insane. It's completely insane. And the real, real, oh, I... act, like no actors, like real patients and stuff like that. It's fucked. <laughs> well, I see one. Um... Like you laugh, it makes you laugh, but you feel bad when yeah. you're laughing. You're like, "This is yeah. wrong." I've done that before. Well, I've seen. Um, okay, here we go. Road to ruin, damaged lives. I think damaged lives. Okay, I'm looking at a list of these. I can't remember some of the names, but I've seen a whole bunch of them. Uh, damaged. What'd you say was pretty Alpha good. Delphi? I've, yeah. Yeah, Alpha Delphi out of PA. Damage Lives is really good. Uh, Narcotic is good. Assassin, Assassin of Youth. Oh, Alpha one, Delphi. What? Alpha Delphi Alpha video Delphi. or something? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they're still around or not because they were on. Uh, a lot of these ads are like the like the verb that they use on their cover. So, you know, there's one called "I Blame yeah. My Parents." That's a really good one. About crime and stuff. Can you put a link to that company in the chat in the somewhere so I can look yeah. it up? I can't find it on on Google. Okay, I'm that's totally into that. Yet, like, yeah, sex, oh, I have other sex, channels. Sex, I have other sex, channels where I actually make videos and stuff, and all of that weird shit from those yeah. movies is great background. Yeah, like eye candy. Yeah, what well, is one called Sex Madness, which is really good. Dwayne Esper, that's the guy who did a lot of those. Gambling with Souls, I seen that one about prostitution. That was a good one. Well, here's a list. I I got a list right here from Flick Shark. Yeah, Flick Shark. Right here, Flick Shark. Yeah, I had like a list of a whole bunch of them. Uh, just a listing. You you might be able to find a lot of these on YouTube. Now, what do you want to put in a private chat? What? what yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, it's a yeah. listing of the movies. It's something I'll look you up might later. Be able to find a lot of these on YouTube. You know? Yeah, there you go. Oh, it's a big, that's a big a, thing right there. A big link. Yeah. Flick yeah. chart. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, flick chart. Well, it's like the best. Uh, oh, I see. There you go. Oh, there you go. Exploitation yeah. films. Yeah, exploitation from this. Thir- I mean, all of those are very entertaining. They're not that long either. Damaged lives. What's that one about? Yeah. Damaged lives is. Uh, I've seen Heroin. It. I think it's like lives of, uh, about criminals and stuff like that. One that I blame my parents, like this guy's all oh oh chain for life is really good. Chain for life is about like that uh, the real life Siamese twins, the Hilton sisters, and they're real Siamese twins. And oh. one murdered one murdered a guy, and they both went to jail. And they said, should the other twin have to serve sentence because the other one murdered somebody? Is that on this list? That's not on this list. That was made a little later on. Not on that list. That might be on YouTube too. Let me look up Chain for Life. Yeah, well, you know, at some point I'll probably have to I'll have to come back and pick your brain on all this stuff because this is you know, there's so many of them, but yeah. But uh yeah, that's cool. I mean, I didn't see anyone else. We have a lot of weird interests. 
Yeah. It's all very niche. I don't think there's a lot of people into uh, fucking nine, 1950s yeah. educational films. Yeah. So you're a big jam handy guy, I guess, eh? Yeah. Not yeah, Hilton sister. Hey, who's how there, long? There's hey, a new Shelly, chain for like I don't. There's some new chain. I don't mean that one. <laughs> That's good yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's on here. The Hilton sisters crime drama film noir. Is that real? Yeah, it's on there. Did that really yeah, happen? On, uh, chain Life, Hilton Sisters, that's from 52. No, no, no. I think that's uh, that was a made up story, but it's a real science oh. twin, though. Because I'm yeah. like, oh, I see. Okay. Look, there's a movie yeah, here called How to Undress in Front of Your that. Husband. I mean, Have you watched that? Yeah, I've never seen that one. That looks pretty good. Number crazy. nine How to no, Undress in Front of Your that Husband. One. That's ridiculous. I know. Isn't that crazy? Religious that's Racketeers. Crazy. 1938. Yeah, I mean, what was the other one? I think Damage. Delinquent I can't parents. I, seen size. I can't remember what the hell it was. Oh, that's yeah, great. That's a great one. A bunch of weird stuff. Damage lives. Let's see. From the 30s. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of that stuff you'd probably be able to find on YouTube, though, you know? And there's one called. Um, there's one. Uh, Okay, it's about extramarital affair leads to a young couple. About extra, okay, yeah, it's only like 53 minutes. But I mean, a lot of these movies are very entertaining in their own way, as long as like the audio's not all fucked up, you know. Mm. What is your I'm trying to, I'm trying to find something for you. Oh, are, okay, are you? Yes. Okay. Hold on. Oh, this is like okay. Damaged life is an extramarital affair leads to a young couple contracting VD. That's about VD. I couldn't remember <laughs> what it was about. VD. <laughs> okay. Right. Are you familiar I with the guy... of the works? Oh yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the Church of the Subgenius? Like at all? Uh, maybe. I mean, I'd have to see some. Oh, you mean like um, that Answer Me or something like that? That one. What? Uh, Dark Side. I watched Dark Side Ring. Dark Side Ring's pretty good. Chevy. What was there was some other fucked up thing that um. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a link. It's a okay. It's a movie. It's a 43 long 43 minute long movie called Welcome it's called Let's Visit the World of the Future. Oh okay. And uh it's it's insane. It's insane, okay. dude. You'll love it. I've I've streamed this for people and they've like yeah. just said cut this off. <laughs> really? <laughs> I see a lot share crazy stuff. Hey, it's a up, good buddy? watch. Oh man, the subject oh, okay. oh, cool. Fun. You know the sub genius? Okay. Yes, yes. Give me slack or kill me. That's right. You gotta go out and take other people's slack. Awesome. See, I mean, we're we all connected. So have you no, seen have you seen the movie? Yeah. Uh what is it? Let's visit the world of the future. No, oh, awesome. no, I have not. With the clown people. Oh, it's fucked. I just put awesome. a link in the thing there. Good. I'll yeah, it. it's on it's on YouTube. Okay. Oh, cool. Like that guy that Ivan Stang's movies, oh, like he's an yeah, old I mean, dude now. Yeah. He's still doing weird shit. But uh I, his older I, I 70 guys will say I'm oh, saying yeah. he's gotta be in his 70s by now. He's got I probably I think he's might be in his 80s. I think oh, he's wow. really old. Yeah. But like his movies that he made in the 70s and 80s were just fucking mind bending. And he yeah. still does weird shit now with AI, right? I don't know if it's him or maybe his kids, really? but oh wow, yeah. still bizarre, creepy stuff, right? Well, it used to be back in the nineties. Uh, 
You ever see any Hershey Gordon Lewis and stuff? You would yeah. see Bob Dobbs stickers yeah. everywhere. You see Bob Dobbs yeah. stickers all over life posts and everything. Yeah. Oh, I still um I still like on, like I have a few channels and I always have little Easter eggs of like Bob Dobbs yeah. or whatever some yeah. genius shit yeah. Yeah. because there's always one yeah. person who's like hey fuck I know what that is yeah yeah oh cool that's actually the inspiration like I make a, I'm making an e-zine I'm mailing out like magazines to random people addresses yeah. that I find yeah I don't even know who these people are and select celebrities and shit like that but it's all based <laughs> off of, yeah Targeted, oh, targeted God. celebrity, but it's all based ever, off of subgenius shit. Did you ever hear? Did you ever hear oh, of Operation cool. Mindfuck from back in the eighties and nineties? What? Operation Mindfuck. Oh uh, yeah, it was familiar just like that back in the eighties and nineties. People would, people who didn't, didn't know each other would send random like stuff and fanzines and magazines to these targeted yeah. individuals, yeah. and they would yeah. get it. And you know, like some of them didn't know what the hell was going on. Well, I don't want to like give away too much of what I'm up to, but uh, yeah. with yeah, the I'm people sure. that are targeted, right? Uh, yeah. I'm going to also include a list of the other people who are on the targeted list. Like these are people who may or may not know each other, right? Professionally. <laughs> so that they, they're oh, like, wow. start talking yeah. with each other. Like, are you getting these fucked up are magazine? <laughs> But I'm also going to just send it to random addresses and fax machines. I'm going to be faxing them to fucking... I have a list of fax machines, man. I mean, that fax machine's free, basically. Yeah, yeah it is now. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and I even found a little program that does automatic... Like, it's... Oh, fuck, I shouldn't even say this. It's probably illegal. Like an auto-faxer? A robo... Oh, no, that, that's not illegal. We just use them in corporate America all oh. the time. Oh, really? Well, I'm going to yeah. do that. I'm going to send it to various offices, send it to Pfizer, fucking whatever, right? Just so people read this fucking insane... Like, it literally reads, like, you know those things you'll see stuck on a telephone pole? Some schizophrenic wrote some fucking manifesto? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's literally like that. <laughs> I'm just going to flood it. When oh, I okay, weird. get this. When I, I got some. Um, I, when I worked I got some stuff like from... twenty five years ago. Okay. We had. Yeah. I, I worked in loan servicing. We had mm. this guy who had a loan with us. He had a he, yeah. had a he had a small business disaster loan. He would send these random, crazy, handwritten letters that were like the length of a the, the length of a, an undergraduate thesis, and Fuck. ultimately we would read through them. And none of it would make any coherent sense whatsoever. The the guy, oh, the, I guy would... the guy, I mean, these were works of art. If we could have saved them, but yeah, the guy, I would have saved and preserved. I collect well, that well, shit. But this guy, he wrote letters where he claimed he was a notary public. <laughs> he um, operated heavy equipment. He cleared <laughs> chainsaws. Oh, awesome. he was he he was a yeah. local magistrate. Um, he did translation services. It was just that all this random crazy stuff, and we he would send like one a month, and it, it, it would and it would be in a it would be just overstuffed in a regular postal size envelope. <laughs> Fuck me! And, and and my buddy would get it, and we'd sit back there on our lunch break at our at our cubicles looking at it. And he said, what the fuck does this even mean? And I said, well, it means the guy probably is off his meds by the end of the month every month. Yeah. Uh, be but fuck. I, would, I mean, that's probably I, company I mean, property I mean, at some point. I would, I would save those, man. It, it, yeah. But it's, but it's like, it, it, I mean, it would be like modern works of surreal literature by the time you get through reading it, because he he just rambled this stream of consciousness on handwritten notes, and and he would use legal pad, so the, yeah. so the spacing was small, but he would fill oh, every God. line on the legal pad, and sometimes he would draw diagrams and. Oh fuck. Know, yeah, that's a treasure. Yeah. It, it that, you know, it I, really was. I've also found that you know I don't you know whatever. Yeah. I'm not a psychiatrist, but I always found that the crazier the person is, the smaller the writing is. Teeny tiny fucking yeah. just cramming everything they can onto <laughs> one page, it's, and it's nuts. <laughs> this guy was something else, and um, one time we pulled his file just to see what what the deal was. <laughs> He was like, we pulled his loan and loan agreement and everything. And this, and this was like 25 years ago. We're talking like the early, late nineties, like 98, 99. And he was just this guy 
who got a disaster loan up north. I can't say what state because hell, he may still be alive for all I know. And um, be listening. And and but he just he he said on his occupation on his loan application, if I remember, he said he was a farmer, but it was impossible because the amount of land. Oh, oh, we lost him. Oh, he might come back because he's driving. I was interested in that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I, I he can bring All it right. back up. Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay, we lost yeah, you there. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. Going through a little, I may be going through a little dead zone here in Virginia. But anyway, he he listed okay. his collateral on for the loan, and he said his occupation was farmer, but there was no way there's no way in hell he had enough property to farm anything because it was like just we're talking just like a couple of acres so <laughs> who knows who knows who gave him this fucking loan eh yeah oh the federal government did federal oh fuck. oh well then good for him i hope he never paid a dime of it back ah uh, who knows he may have he may have like sent sent an envelope every month to our payment center with like a sewing needle some some grasshopper wings the petals yeah. of a Petals of a of a rosebud yeah. plant, yeah. Um, a sponge, <laughs> a sponge, or some random lint out of his dryer, a, a fingernail. <laughs> I mean, who knows what he put in his payment envelopes? Oh, that's freaky. That's beyond freaky, man. That's awesome. But he's the I guy's can't... either the guy's either I... hilarious no. or he has bodies in his basement. There's not no in between with this. <laughs> well, I think I think it's just off his meds. Like I I. Yeah. <laughs> I, I met this woman, uh, like, I don't know if she's really even a street woman or whatever. It's this crazy lady, right? Not lady. She was younger, in her 30s or something. I met her, and she was, like, in a dress, and it, she looked completely fucking crazy. And I started talking to her, and she was telling me, oh, I'm descending from royalty and blah, 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 and all of this stuff. And then she's, like, showing me she's had these binders, and she's, like, sh like shit she had written and, and all of this. And I said, okay, well... I mean, I kind of like took a chance and I said, well, here's my address. If you ever like want to, you know, you want me to proofread or whatever, some of this stuff, just mail it to me. Right. And I'll yeah. look it over. And holy fuck, did I open a floodgate? I get, a, I get oh, these fucking oh, five page letters every week. I've, I've have them all like perfectly preserved. One day I'll fucking, I don't want to really read them out loud. Cause I, I would feel like yeah. I'm making fun of her, but it's pretty fucking. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty wild where her brain went. Like, I kind of like schizophrenics for that reason. Yeah. They come up with shit you could never think of. The, well, it's the, cor it's the correlations in their brain because so much of the connections in their brain are broken. They find yeah. correlations that just don't make any sense to anyone who's outside of that subjective experience. Yeah. But, but what's also weird, because I did talk to her a lot in person. Like, any time I would see her, I'd go and talk to her. After a while, I started to understand how she was making these connect, the very des desperate yeah. ideas, connecting them together. I'm like, whoa, you know, you kind of get it, but uh, it's just too out there. I we like her. We, we have a guy um, in Birmingham. Um, he rescued a little yeah. puppy and, get, and gave it to us last oh. um, last last spring or summer. I think it was last spring. It may have been about a year ago. And um, he lives. He lives in town. He lives in an apartment in town, and he's disabled. And he goes and hangs out at the park every day with his dog. If the weather's not bad, so he deals with a lot of street people. And mm -hmm. he posted on Facebook the other day about a woman who was um, probably. I think she he said she was in her fifties. He anyway. He said when she's on her meds, she's okay. He said she's you know she's fairly lucid, but she was yeah. but she was off her but she was off her meds. And she was going around randomly grabbing people and asking them how many snakes are out there. And he mm. said he said he finally got her calm and said, "Well, what do you mean? How many snakes? How many snakes are in the park?" And she said, "No, how many snakes are out there?" And she pointed all the way around and like you know, like in the world. And you know, it's just the, getting this fixation that they can't get rid oh, of. Oh wow! Yeah. I mean, you can't imagine answering that question just saying there's probably millions, yeah. if not billions, of snakes billions. out there. Yeah, billions. Yeah, that would just freak her out. <laughs> yeah.
I had um I used to live in this place that was sort of like a like a converted motel, you know, like uh, where really really poor people hang out, drug addicts and all this yeah. shit, right? And I used to live stream from there. People thought it was fucking great because people I would sit outside and then these crazy people just come up to me and start saying all this shit. But there's this one girl, woman, and uh she she kept saying, "Oh, I was raped. Yeah. Robert Palmer raped me, and and weird stuff like this." And and then uh, one day, like yeah. she said, "Oh, you know, you because I was I read a lot." She's like, "You're always out here reading. Like, what's a good book you think I could read?" Because all she read was this weird New Age stuff. And I told yeah. her to read Mein Kampf, right? Right. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, this is a joke, right? And then one day I'm doing a stream. And she, the, the, the framing was perfect. She just comes into frame and yeah. just says, Coda, I've been reading Mind Comfort. It's really, really good. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Don't say that on a fucking stream. Well, bro. well, okay. Okay. <laughs> part of, okay. I'll, part of Mind Comfort makes sense because what Hitler said about the post World War I political situation oh, wow. in Europe that was imposed by he, Versailles he, was absolutely correct. He predicted what. Oh, was yeah. Happen. Oh, yeah. 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 But that's, that's like, yeah. 20, 30 pages max. Yeah, yeah. And then the rest of it is just his personal his personal rant. But yeah. like, I don't um, think, I, I honestly don't think she read it. Well, I think I she just know. said that. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see back like in, let me think about it. My first ex wife and I moved together and moved in together in 1992. We lived in a crap little apartment yeah. in Birmingham, Alabama. And we paid by the month, but there were people there who paid by the week to live there. It was an old building. It was a beautiful old building, but it had been neglected for many, many years. Well, we had a we had a neighbor two doors down. She was a stripper, and I think she was doing a little something extra on the side, too, because she came in one night banging on the door asking if she could buy a condom from us. And anyway, one night, we heard all this commotion out in the hallway. Yeah. And... She's running naked down the street, which our which the street the apartment building was on was was uh, was was on north. Uh, it was a northbound one way street, but it was headed. But it was but it was pitched downhill. It was this pretty steep little gradient. She was nude, running down running down the street, screaming like hell that there were bugs chasing her, while the cops were trying to calm her down and keep her from running into the street, running into the traffic and getting killed. And, yeah. you know, it's just when you live in places like that, you are never bored. There's no, nothing no. boring about it. My The first weekend I was there, I didn't stream it, but the first weekend I was there, I was just kind of meeting them. Like, you make friends so quick, right? I was probably had yeah. a bunch of buddies. And then uh, I was there for, I had been there for like three days, but there was a gate around the place because there was like a sober living kind of thing going on there, a, a rehab. And there yeah. was these two hookers outside the gate just screaming at each other, right? This middle of the day, right? Screaming at each other. And the one, the one, uh, the younger one just rips her clothes off, right? And ran in because we had the, the, the gate was open, yeah. runs in, right? Run, like, and yeah. runs past me and into my apartment, right? Oh, God. He's like, you gotta, you gotta save me. You gotta save me. I'm like, holy fuck, I got some weird naked, like, I, the, uh, you know, I don't, if the cops show up, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen, right? Yep. Then all the all the other neighbor people just like like, you know, something like uh, out of I don't know, like Black Black Hawk Down, they just descended out of their apartments and yeah. grabbed her, right? They just swarmed out, like hauled her ass out of there and locked the gate. Yeah. And uh, I was like, what the fuck? And everyone else is like, oh yeah, that shit happens all the time. <laughs> But oh, it was yeah. weird because there was uh, the, like guys would come in. I guess they were like pimps or drug dealers or whatever, and they would like cause trouble. Sort of, we had like a parking lot. It was a kind of a U shaped building with a parking lot in the middle, and they would cause shit and start screaming. And then it would happen again. All the apartments would empty out and just fucking swarm the dude. It was pretty fucking wild, man. It almost like sounds it. almost like a human ant colony or something. Everyone looked after each other, but also everyone fucked each other over constantly. The gossip was unbelievable. That's all that place was. Gossip. Well, that, that's what was so weird about that, that building we lived in because there, were, there was like an elderly guy who lived downstairs. He had, he had somehow he had a, um, it wasn't like, it wasn't like a Steinway, but it was, it was like a medium sized piano. It wasn't an upright. 
and he would play piano for like half the day. And, and you know, we're talking hmm. like 1992. He was probably 80 years old in 1992. Hmm. And there was the crazy, there was the crazy, the crazy, sometimes sane black chick who lived down from us with, I don't know if it was her kid or her niece or nephew and her mom. And sometimes she was lucid. And sometimes if she was on drugs, she wasn't. And then upstairs, we had the uh, gay couple who fought constantly. And one of them would get <laughs> on the ledge of the third story apartment and threaten to jump all the time. It was, they, it they, was just, it just was like just, shop little man. Holy shit. Yeah, it was just nuttiness. It was just, it was just nuttiness. But, you know, it's, uh, I'm pretty sure there was, there was a guy who lived at the end of the, the end of the hall who kept quiet. And um, yeah. it's funny because he drove a Yugo, which, I, I, you know, that's you never weird. Yugo. Yeah, you never see you. I mean, even in 1992, you never saw Yugos anymore. No. They had a Yugo, and he just really kept quiet. He's a clean cut guy. I mean, hell, for all I know, he may have been a cop or he may have just been going to school and trying to stay out of everybody's business, whatever. I mean, he was friendly enough, but the people that owned the building, a lot of times they would take the money and they were supposed to be, they were supposed to be doing repairs for it and they never would do it. So Fuck eventually, the bil- yeah, eventually like 20, 20 or so years, years ago, the building just got condemned. And as far as I know, it's still sitting there vacant because from what hmm. somebody, from what somebody told me that the, that the, um, the duct system and the, I mean, it just had old steam radiators. Oh and, God. Um, and, and, and when I, when, when my, ex, my ex-wife and I moved in, it was winter time and snow. One time we got caught in an ice storm in the, in the apartment. And I walked down to the convenience <laughs> store and I was able to grab a few items. We didn't have much in the fridge because we were just poor as hell. We we're, you know, 21, 22 years old and just broke. And um, anyway, I walked down to the convenience store and walked down to um, grab some ti- Chinese takeout and just some snacks and such until the, until the ice melted. Well, the, um, the guy who lived on site, who was the resident manager, he cranked up the furnace to power the steam radiator so that the vacant apartments, so the, the plumbing wouldn't, wouldn't break in the vacant, vacant apartments. By the end of the night, my ex and I were sleeping naked with the windows open because it was so freaking hot in the apartment you couldn't stand it with the radiator on and we didn't have a way to cut it off. <laughs> but it, it, it's just, but I mean, you know, like years but later. Look, like, hey. You're still talking about it today, so it's very memorable, eh? Oh, it is. Well, that's what I was going to say. Seven years later, I lived in a tra- six, seven years later, I lived in a trailer park after we split up, and it was just as dramatic. I mean, I had the I had the Friday I had the Friday and Saturday night drunken drunken woman women fighting outside over their husband over their husbands or boyfriends or whatever. I, I still have, have that. I have that to this day. Uh, that's. Like the smoking area, in, I'm in a big building. It's like a yeah. poor people, government s- subsidized shit. Uh, and right outside my window, like I'm high, I'm higher up, but right outside my window is where they all smoke. But they're all smoking weed and drinking constantly, and it's just gossip and screaming, and they're all fucking each other, and it's just. Uh, I one time I wanted to like th- I pissed into like a speaking of recycling. I pissed into a 7-Eleven Big Gulp cup, and yeah. I was literally on the verge of just throwing it on them because I <laughs> fucking because I wanted to go to sleep. Yeah. I, well, I used to do that. I used to do that at times because I had to work in the morning, and the two gay guys, the two gay guys upstairs, would fight and scream and yell at each other. And and one night, the guy got on out on the ledge, and he said, "Well, I'm gonna jump. Oh, you're gonna you miss me when I jump. I'm gonna jump." And I, and I opened the window and I said, either fucking jump or shut up. I'm trying yeah. to go to sleep. Did you, ever, did you ever see that film, Shut Up, Little Man? Yes. Yes, I did. So like so like that, the guy it, recorded it, the, the gay couple fighting? Yeah, that, that was so <laughs> funny. That movie is so freaking weird, too. It is so bizarre. It's such a bizarre film, and I love it. Jay Bear's sawing logs right now. We put him to sleep. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh shit. Sure. <laughs> I burned the middle. Do you like the trailer park though? I have yeah. like I like the I like the exhibitionist yeah. single mom jailbait living next door to me. She would she Gee, would sunbathe yeah. in her she would sunbathe in her backyard and take her top off. 
And I'm just going, girl, you know, you're only like 17. Oh, yeah. Cut that crap out. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that other place that I oh, lived no, at, no, there was, there was this one uh, prostitute. Right. I think she was a part-timer because I think I saw her working somewhere. So I think she did this to supplement, but she would always yeah. hang out with me. She wasn't 17. She was like in her twenties, but actually really kind of a good looking yeah. girl, but you could see it kind of going away from drugs. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. She's she would always ball. like sort of uh, flaunt and you know, it's like, try, I don't know, trying to make a customer out of me or so. I don't even know what her fucking deal was, but she was always yeah. hanging out with me. Right. But and I, I just told her, just cut that shit out. Like, you know, don't well, start showing me like doing literally the Sharon Stone showing me the cooch thing when she sat. Yeah, on the, I'm like, oh yeah, it's, it's not gonna fucking happen. So just just be a norm. Like I was fucking 45 years old, right? She's in her 20s. Yeah. I'm just cover that shit up. You know what I mean? Well, well, well. This one I was like 25, and she was she was like seven, 16, 17, 18, whatever. And I'm going hell Jeez. no, hell no. It ain't gonna happen, girl. Go on, move along. Wow. Go back home or go whatever. Who knows? Home life probably. Yeah. Fuck. Problem is, you live less than like forty-five feet away from me in the trailer park. So there we go. And then, and then if I oh, brought a man. girlfriend over, she would get pissed off about it and get home. Oh yeah, naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Naturally. <laughs> that's, right, that's bad. Because then yeah. your girlfriend's like, "What do you? What like sixteen-year-old girls now?" And you're like, "I didn't yeah. fucking do anything. I didn't do anything right." Right. Yeah. Holy shit. That's crazy. But anytime you have clusters of people that are, I guess you'd say, kind of the yeah. fringe of society, you're going to be in for some interesting yeah. memories. You are. You just are. Yeah. Like, I'll be honest with you. I kind of like it. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I'm not po oh. really that poor. But uh, I tend to always, I've always lived in these fucking yeah. areas. I don't know what it is. It's a, some, like, I hate the fucking drama. Everyone's a fucking gossip. That, it drives me nuts after a point, right? Because they're always trying to suck you into one side or the other. Yeah. But then sometimes I kind of miss it, and I'll just whatever. I used to, it's like, you know, whatever, especially in the summer. They're out there all the time, right? I'll, sometimes I would just get some beer, cold beers and sit out there and just listen to this yeah. fucking bullshit. Just shaking my head going, holy fuck, it never ends. Well, it doesn't, you know, it's, um, I mean, I mean, I live, we live out in the country. I mean, I, I'm on like 38 acres and yeah, I, I, it's, oh, that's great. It's rural, but it's turning or it's going to be suburban before long because people are buying the, buying the acreage yeah. up there and putting up houses and McMansions and everything. So we're going to have yeah. to move before long, you know, we'll have to move in the next five years because it's just not going to be tenable to live there anymore. Yeah. But yeah. when I lived in the city, Especially if you live in a, if you live in cheap in cheap accommodations like a cheap apartment or something, it never gets boring. It never does. No, you know there's just always up. something. It's, there's just always something screwed up or funny or something that's gonna you know. I, I mean when 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 I'm when the ex and I moved when the second ex and I moved to um, Tennessee back 25 years ago, I had the apartment to myself for about about nine months. She moved up ahead of me, and I'd go up every other weekend, and. Mm. The, in the same building, a, a girl moved in. She was a single mom, like maybe 20 years old, moved in with her baby. Um, one or two, she was two apartments down from me, um, uh, down the walkway from me. And I talked to her. I, I wasn't trying to flirt with her or anything. I was talked to her and said, hey, you know, if you need anything, just let me know. I'm here a lot. But, you know, well, you know I'm, I'm having to go because my wife yeah. moved up and, I'm, you know, I'll be in, in and out. <sighs> well, one night, her baby daddy and some of his buddies came and pounded on her door. Apparently, she'd gotten a restraining order against him or something. Well, she he's pounding on the door, pounding on the door. I could be at work at 7 o'clock sharp the next morning. It's a week. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, so I'm pissed. And at the time, yeah. I, had, I had a Ruger Mini-14 little, little Ruger <laughs> Mini 14 rifle. So I pop a 30-round magazine yeah. in it, and I can't oh, open my fuck. back door. And I go outside, and I, I chamber yeah. around really loudly, and I level the gun at the baby daddy. I tell him if he doesn't get the hell off that the that, that the coroner's gonna have to come and put a toe tag on him and his buddies. Yeah. Well the guy the guy pisses himself and leaves. But he never came back, thank God. Because I asked the girl the next day if, if I told her I said, you know, I said, I'm not trying to get in your business. And she kind of laughed and said, No, she said, I'm glad you did it. 
she said she called the cops and told them what happened anyway, that he probably had a warrant out on him. But that's kind of the price you pay for living in multi multi-family and multi-person housing. There's always going to be one or yeah. two that are. Yeah. Well, like the place I'm in now, I'm just glad that there's no children. Like it's a no child building, but fucking yeah. last, not last new year's, but the new year's before there was, uh, there's this group and, and it was this one dude who was like a biker. And then these two, like, I, I don't know, aged prostitute. I don't know. Fuck. They're just gross T tattoo girls. And this other guy who's bald. And I guess they had a big Coke party, right? On New yeah. Year's, yeah. and uh, I'm like on the next day, I remember I got into the elevator. And I saw the biker guy, and he's with this other dude, this other gigantic motherfucker, and they're carrying a, a trunk, right? And they they opened it. And I'm like, hold, and I'm looking at him. There's like fucking just guns, right? Yeah. And uh, they're like fucking off. And then I go out, and then one of the girls shows up. Her face is just smashed up fucking oh, just shit. two black eyes and then the other one shows up same thing i guess this guy fucking just lost his shit and what he did is he need the one girl in the face right like oh just fucking God. super bander into in the face and the other one put her fucking face into the into a coffee table oh god and then yeah. but he lived in the building and apparently he had this giant cache of weapons and drugs and shit right so his buddies had to like get get that out of the apartment before the cops showed oh. up but none of them pressed charges on him he got kicked out of the building but he never whatever yeah. uh, the cops might have pressed charges on him but uh, the, they, the, the, my, my, the women and, didn't here, here in america most most jurisdictions if the woman won't press charges the cops won't do crap you know because yeah. if she if she's not going to be a cooperative witness they can't really do anything yeah, and and that's no, and I, and since, since then I've seen him hanging around out there with them. There's they're buddies again. All is forgiven. Yeah, uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> were, were they at least were they were they at least interesting guns or just normal run of the mill street guns? No, I saw uh, like I'm not really a gun guy, so I don't really know. But there was yeah. uh, there was some sort of a rifle and a couple handguns and whatever. It was this kind of like trunk thing. Yeah, not trunk, but like a a big case, big case. It took they both had to carry it. Well, and like you can't. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. And this is Canada, and you can't be. You know, we have different rules on fucking how many guns you can keep in a fucking bachelor suite. <laughs> well, they'd hate me then. They would absolutely hate me because, you know, it's like I, I, I just at home in my house, there's really only like there's there's a there's an entrance to the garage and an entrance to the back and front door. But once you go in the bedroom, there's no way out. It's one way in, one way out when you get in the bedroom. So, you know, the bedroom. That's the kill zone. Yeah, that's the kill zone. The hallway is the kill zone. And I, I deliberately have motion activated lights at the front of the hallway so I can see a silhouette if somebody's in the hallway. Yeah. And all, all I need is a silhouette, and oh, then man. you know, all of a sudden you're going to get a bunch of 308 bullets coming through your torso. Is it that bad where you live? No, but um, my Are neighbor, home invasions and shit. Which, my, na my neighbor, who oddly enough, ironically enough, is in the gun business. He owns wow. exit. He had meth heads come up and steal his kid's ATV out of the out of his yard, and. Uh. Charges and the cops and the cops said, "Yeah, you know, we got to see who did it. We don't have any, any camera footage or anything. You know, we need to kind of know." Well, he found out through the grapevine who did do it, but he, he's a, he's kind of afraid to do anything because he's afraid the guy might try to come back and you know hurt him or hurt his kids. So, you know, he's just got yeah. a bunch of um, he's got a bunch of camera, bunch of home cameras up, and you know, mm -hmm. he said he's got a he said he went ahead and built himself a a three hundred blackout caliber ar-15 for the home just in case somebody tried anything but you know it's it's just kind of random and but the problem is as as things get worse in, in our economy it's going to get worse for that kind of thing happening here you know it's for sure it's, it, and yeah, for sure like where like where i am now i'm getting off in middle of virginia to get gas this little exit is kind of a sad little dead zone there's like two or three vacant restaurants there's a vacant bank and I have seen before when I've stopped for gas at night, I've seen meth heads walking around 
trying to, um, you know, get toward, um, whoops, uh oh, excuse me, dude, trying to get toward, um, people to ask for money or try to beg money or whatever. And, you know, it's just, I'm sure I travel. I don't have, it's not like I have large sums of money or anything, but you know, I do get some cash time to time from adoption events where people pay their fees with cash. And yeah. you know, when that happens, um, I don't exactly want to, you know, not be able to handle business. So I, I carry a handgun yeah. on me when I travel and I keep another one, oh, man. a smaller one uh, in the dash just in yeah. case when I sleep in the truck. But it's just, you know, it's just kind of prudent because, you know, as people say, well, why don't you carry mace or why don't you carry a taser? And I'm going, dude, have you ever seen what a taser does to somebody on drugs? It does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. If you hit them at all. Yeah, if you hit them at all, yeah. because it's easy, it's easy to it's easy to swipe a taser away. Yeah, they well, they also like don't don't really fly straight. I've noticed they that. They kind of wiggle. It's like a, like a million little harpoons wiggling out. Yeah. Hey, I got to pause for gasoline. I'm not logging off, but I'll be back. Give me about five, ten minutes. Yeah, I'm going to fire up some coffee. Oh, cool. Oh, before I forget, Coda, do you, you have Tubi TV? you watch Tubi TV I've got, at all? I've got basically everything. I just... I, okay, what, uh, just there, There's a movie called Scum of the Earth, Herschel Gordon Lewis, about like them selling like... Uh, like pornographic photos, uh, oh. kid to some high school. That's a great movie. It's really good. Yeah, hold on. That's what that guy says. You're damaged merchandise, and this is a fire sale. You'll do what I tell you. You do what I. It's really good. It's an awesome movie. And then every everyone. Some of the Earth. Like, Nineteen sixty three. Yeah. Nineteen. Scum of the Earth. Nineteen sixty. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean well, naive was, and innocent uh, teenage girl is blackmailed into modeling in the nude for a photographer's yeah, in league yeah, with yeah. a teenage man. Yeah. Wow, that sounds convoluted. It's awesome. It's really entertaining, though. You know, it's. I'm a big Herschel Gordon Lewis fan. I mean, that's really entertaining movie. What? Herschel yeah. Gordon Lewis. Jeez, fuck, man, <laughs> you are a fucking encyclopedia. We should do a podcast. You just know shit, man. Yeah. I mean, that's the guy who did. Herschel yeah. Gordon well, Lewis. That, Who's that? Well, he became the godfather of gore, you know? I mean, it's like. It's, oh. Yeah. Well, oh, he, I see. He did the first gore movie called Blood Feast. Yeah. Back so he's kind of like a sort of Ed yeah. Wood kind of a and dude. Then he did eh? stuff like Gruesome Two. Yeah. I mean, but he yep, had like. There it he is. Would, he had like Maniacs. And there'd be like a. He even did a couple. Of, yeah. And he did stuff like. Um, he did one called Year of the Yahoo about like some uh, hillbilly yokel that ran and became president. That's pretty good. <laughs> and he did one called Living Venus starring Harvey Corman. And that was like before Harvey Corman uh, became, got famous on Carol Burnett. It was like some ex, uh, okay. like some national quieter, uh, inquiry type. I find it hard to believe that Harvey Corman was ever an actor before Carol Bur or was anything without Carol Burnett. Even he sucked on that show. Oh no, he was in that movie before that. He was in that movie before that. He said, "Well, after the movie, he said, well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if I can find any other work and stuff, guy." And then uh, David Friedman, because he uh, going Lewis would team up with David Friedman, and uh, and I, I guess he rode on a plane with him, and, and he had hard before that he didn't want to have anything to do with him. Uh, David Friedman at all. Hi, Pandora. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, okay, my list is growing here. It's good. I'm going to watch yeah. now. Scum in the Earth. Yeah. What was yeah. that? The un, uh, the, uh, fucking, uh, the baby one. Tomorrow's the unborn. Children. Tomorrow's, Tomorrow's children. Yeah. Tomorrow's children. Oh, that's also yeah. on Tubi. Yeah, all the shit's yeah. free. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, I, I, I keep forgetting people. I mean, I didn't know if I thought I was the only one to like this stuff. I try to tell everyone else, they're like, what the hell are you all talking about? You know? I, I like if it, I like it if it's like these movies, you don't judge them on quality. You judge yeah. them on weirdness. Yeah, no, like I mean, you're wondering weird. what the fuck is this guy thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he did one called Something Weird, Hershko and Lewis. And that's yeah. why that one guy did a whole like um this whole like thing like something weird video. Yeah, it's a crazy movie. 
Yeah, I think you like that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I also hey, like, man, you know, I don't, I don't really re know the names of these people, but uh, uh, ones where it's not like yeah. social guidance, but it's like some guy's personal fucking, you know, gripe about society, and then they'll make a movie. <laughs> it's terrible. It's like these people are the problem. I've seen a whole bunch of stuff like that, you know. I hate games. I see. I got. I mean, I I I have the best people here. I really do. And I'm glad you're one. Of, I'm glad you're one of us, Coda. <laughs> well, especially well, I like talking to you. You're, like I said, you're like you're like a fucking encyclopedia on some of this shit, man. Oh, thank you. Like I thought I, I knew. Never, I thought I knew weird shit, but you yeah. forget it, man. You got me beat. <laughs> I mean, it's just after like years of stuff because people are like, how the hell do you watch this shit? It's, it's enter if it's entertaining because sometimes, sometimes you find some stuff that's boring as hell, but a lot of times it's entertaining. And then when I found you were a no, big Devo I, fan, I'm like, oh man, yeah, that's a that's a sign probably. But like, yeah. I, I find myself I'll binge watch this crazy weird yeah. shit, and even yeah. I'll say to myself, why am I watching this? Yeah, no. You know what I mean? Why am I watching yeah. this garbage? Yeah, yeah. Damage Life is really good. Damage Life is really good. I think it's about VD. And Damage you know, Life. Yeah. Damage Life. That's on YouTube too. That's Even one the titles are TV. fucking great. I know. Can you imagine releasing that now? I know. You Can you imagine <laughs> an anti-VD movie? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I couldn't not. Well, they used to show these things in a burlesque houses back in the day. It wasn't like you show them like regular films. Uh, well, oh, so it's kind of. Oh, so yeah. it's it. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind it's of a cheesy porno. kind yeah. of a porno. Damn it! Yeah, well, it's more, I mean, it's not really a porno. But I mean, it's uh, exploitation. Enough, yeah, exploitation type stuff. Oh, we can't now, talk about VD in the '30s. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's like it's Canadian. Yeah, lives. yeah. It's a Canadian I film. Oh fuck! Yeah. Oh really? It's Canadian. Oh cool. And I blame my parents. Is really good too. I blame but my distributed parents. by Columbia Pictures. What the fuck, man? Oh cool. Oh that's crazy. I didn't know that. I just saw a low budget version of it. Edgar G. Omer. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yep. His life of debauchery brought disease to his wife! Exclamation point. Wow, oh, that yeah. looks brutal. Yeah, yeah they uh, they got some really good ones though. I mean, they they have like all these different things. Like, um, I blame my parents. There was one. Um, I can't remember. There was some. There was some that had Karen Black in it. I saw. God damn! I wish I could remember that. Um, it was a double feature. Hercule Gordon Lewis's first movie. Oh, damn! I wish hey, have you ever seen it. ever seen a, a show called uh, uh, one of them called Perversion for Profit? I think I did. Or I heard of it. Yeah, it's 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 like it's all about like homosexual perverts picking up schoolboys and stuff like that. And I think somehow oh. they end up they end up oh. linking it to international oh. communism. Yeah, that was on. Just um, a, yeah, that was on uh, on uh, Turner Classic Movies on the Underground. Yeah, I oh, thought no. that was I it's, 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 it, it's a jam handy. It's another jam handy movie. Yeah, that's one of those. That was on. Uh, they used to have the Underground on Turner Classic Movies like Saturday night, and they play like weird stuff or like the Alphabet from David Lynch or the Grandmother and weird stuff like that. You know, they play all these weird David Lynch movies and stuff too. Mm. Trying to find out uh Herschel Lewis first movie. Let's see. Well, I got Herschel Gibbs. How the hell did I get that? I didn't know anyone else. Like, I mean, hey, I watched, he, um, he, yeah. I watched the first half of Dune 2 last night. Yeah. What'd you think? Did you see Was it? Any good? Uh huh. -uh. Well, I I don't know. Like uh, yeah, I guess so. I just, uh, I have hang-ups about the worms. Like, how the fuck do they yeah. get so big yeah. and stay alive in a desert? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't make sense, but whatever. No, it's yeah. pretty good. I only watch half of it.
He did. You know, I just, called, I just. Uh, yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, he. Did I'm gonna make some coffee, but I can hear you. Roulette, which is really good. If you get a chance to see suburban roulette, it's about like swingers that Hertz Gordon Lewis did. Fuck. I don't know if that's on TV. <laughs> that's a funny one. Go suburban. Yeah. One, one these days. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get a list yeah, off you at some point. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm checking out Horton Gurn Lewis. Um, there was some double feature that he did that was on Alpha Delphi that I remember getting. Um, his very first movie, he well, he did he did stuff about moonshine called "This Stuff Will Kill You" and "Monster Go Go: How to Make a Doll," which is like an early version of uh, Weird Science. It got like a two point nine off of uh, IMDb. Monster Go Bug, Monster Go Go got a one point eight out of ten on ID. ID. Oh, this guy's pretty famous. Eh? Herschel Gordon Lewis. Yeah. He's pretty well known. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, but he did like he super looked, low budget movies back then. Yeah, he looks. Yeah. He looks like a fucking weirdo too. He's got that like, yeah. I don't know that look. I don't know how to describe yeah. it. Creep. Yeah, I mean, he did some other ones. Uh, that Alley Tramp is really good. He did one called Alley Tramp. Well, he did one called Magic Land and Mother Goose. It was some play that some uh, school did about, and he just put a camera there and, and filmed it, and then he released it as a movie. That's not that good, though. Hey, Jason, really honest to God, you're the only person I've ever talked to who said they liked or even knew of Desperate Living. Really? Oh, Desperate Living is funny. I've never, ever run into anyone. Really? I've brought it up with a lot of people. They're like, yeah. what? Who? What is this? Yeah. Mink stole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that was the only one. Let, let said alone said they the liked movie. it. Really? Yeah. I Have you ever? Oh, the opening uh, is so fucking yeah. good. No problem. Yeah. It gets a or little like stupid. Yeah. It gets pretty or stupid later Carolina. on with, with that egg yeah. lady, that stuff. Yeah. But the beginning yeah, yeah. is just yeah. fucking wild, eggs. man. Eggs. Oh, I wanted the eggs, you know? Or like, like Mink Stroll Carolina. never stops screaming, and every line of dialogue is I screaming. I love that. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Brats, brats, brats. Tell your mother go on home. Tell your mother I hate her. Tell your mother yeah. I hate you. Like that. You, you so think I'm that. running a communist yeah. daycare center? Yes. Better go back to your mother. That Doesn't like, your rats, mother love rats, you? Rats. I hate you. Your mother <laughs> hates you. Go. That's I also that. That's I hate you. Yeah. 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 And she just so and she's just having a fucking breakdown. <laughs> I know. Just fucking crazy. Damn, damn, damn. She's having another one of her fits. <laughs> and so it doesn't funny. it doesn't yeah. end. It's awesome. <laughs> Until she realizes that she's a lesbian. So funny. <laughs> she gets so mad funny. she smashes her master plan starts kicking the table and stuff. That shit was so funny. And that one kid is so, that one kid's like, oh I'm sorry, how I'll, I'll tell you have my kids tell you I have an allowance like that. That one kid. And he said, You stole 30 minutes of my life. Do you have enough allowance for that? That was awesome. Yeah. That's why I also like Serial Mom. Like, it has the same vibe. He had a wrong number. Wrong number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought it had a bigger budget, too. I thought that was yeah. funny, too. That's with, uh, what's that her name? Funny. Who's the Serial Mom? Uh, what's her name? Yeah, again? Uh, uh, Kathleen Turner. Yeah, Kathleen, Kathleen Turner, Turner, yeah. 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 Yeah, right when she started putting on the weight. Yeah, that but her funny, doing the though. fucking prank know. calls to her neighbor. Go yeah, ahead. That was so funny. <laughs> a lot of now that movie's a now a lot of people do like Serial Mom that I talk to. That movie's really uh, funny. I I love to see it again. Yeah, it's great. I mean, some of those movies that he did are really good. I mean, but I, I I thought like I thought Death for Living is probably one of my favorite movies of his. You know. It's really funny. You know? And he was saying, like, Roseanne Barr could do a, a pretty good Queen Carlotta. Like, hi, stupid. Hi, ugly. Like, that was really funny shit. But a lot of people just don't get the joke. 
that's a weird thing. People just don't get the joke. I thought it was funny. No, I, I could see that movie turning a lot of people off. You have to have that sort yeah. of sense of humor. Yeah, by me, like I you have to kind of. Yeah. Like you can't even think of it as a movie. That's You're like, just watching John Waters go fucking crazy. Yeah, but I, I thought I thought it was hilarious though. I mean, so much good stuff. But I just, I mean, I didn't, I never saw any of his stuff till I saw uh, Hairspray, and then I found some of his other stuff in like Fort Detrick, Maryland. Right, and that's why I ran like Desperate Living and Multiple Maniacs. And I also ran like um, some of the David Friedman stuff, like the Ilsa movies, like Ilsa She Wolf for the SS, Ilsa Harem Keeper of the Oil Sheiks, and also oh. um, Ilsa. The what? Yeah, that Ilsa, was the not the. Uh, the was Nazi that the weird, Ilsa like, Sheik. Nazi dominatrix kind of thing? or? Yeah. Yeah, that was shot on Ilsa. the Hogan Heroes. I've, I, yeah. I've, I've, never yeah, actually, have, I've never actually watched. What? That was yeah, shot on yeah, the Hogan Hero? Oh, fuck. Was she involved was, in what, yeah. Robert Crane's yeah, death? Yeah, that was Diane Thorne. Diane Thorne, she did a couple movies after that. And then they like were I asking. Said, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, Tigress of Siberia was really good, too. I saw oh, she worked with the SS. Was. Oh, fuck, yeah. buddy. You were in some weird the, shit, man. Yeah. It's also this is a weird SS. kind of yeah. yeah. On, yeah she was from what was from like the early seventies. Yeah, early seventy-five. So David, David Friedman yeah. actually had his name taken off that movie. Yeah, from like seventy-five, <laughs> and then they had it's uh, Canadian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so Canadian. Was, uh, so was Tigress of Siberia, and then just Franco did Wanda the Wicked Warden. Which had the most bizarre ending of Ilsa ever. I don't know if you want me. I don't want to spoil it, you know. But it's, it's, oh, that spoil was, it. Yeah, there's a plot. Yeah, what kind? There's of, a plot. I mean, she, well, I mean, how she? You want to know how she died in the Ilsa? Uh, to, uh, Ilsa the Wicked Warden. You it know? says here the lust of a Nazi medical camp commander matches her sadistic yeah. nature. <laughs> yeah, but, and she would also Little. have sex with the guys there too, and then she'd always castrate them afterward. Oh fuck! Yeah, I mean, it's, it, but there's this one guy that probably drove her mad and stuff like that. Yeah, it's really good movie. Yeah, I mean, but that's like really bizarre stuff. Your audio is fifty minutes behind. Cam, Cam Stanley, you probably just have to yeah. move the uh, progress bar forward. Oh. That's what I've I've done that before. Like I watch a live stream, I'm like far far behind. Yeah, it happens to me all the time. You don't even notice. I mean, these are like like the lunatic fringe of movies and stuff, though. But I mean, a lot of stuff's entertaining. I mean, but when you see a bad movie that's boring, it's different, you know. No, that's I mean, that that's just hell. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I I my that my review of Ilsa the Wicked War, I think I had my most views of a movie review. I think I had like over. 10,000 views, I think. Oh, that's movie. your number one. That's your number one review. The Ilsa. No, yeah, sure. No, number one, number one movie review, I think. Let me double check. Really? My, eh? number one, my number one video was how to fix a no audio problem on your spectrum. Uh, spectrum that had like 150,000 views. Oh, yeah. The, the, the most successful video I think I've had. Well, yeah. there's two. One was. 80,000 and one was the the most that that was not a movie review but the other one was yeah. the movie review that got the most was maybe 30,000 and that was for uh, oh, uh Lars von Trier's yeah. kingdom oh, whatever i tapped into those fans big time well i'll tell you what i think no movie i thought i don't think it's been crazier than holy mountain that was nuts holy i mountain didn't like crazy. it I don't know. Like Not my thing. Uh, it was, was too... Okay, yeah, that's my most... I don't like it when... I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's like Jordorowski yeah. was really trying to yeah. be weird and showing, you know, like... Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's kind of what it is. Yeah. It was funny. I like the The visuals were hilarious. Oh, oh, that... I I was wrong. It has 20,000 views that will... Uh, 
Elsa. I don't know why they originally called it Wanda the Wicked War, and I don't know why they didn't call it Elsa. That was done by Jeff Franco, the uh, yeah. Spanish director. My yeah. most successful video was uh, a review of a documentary about Ghislaine Maxwell. And the oh, only really? reason it did any, f I, I swear it's just because it had Ghislaine Maxwell in the title. It was just okay. whatever clickbait because the review sucked and it was uh, it's kind of, it was just a documentary. Who cares, right? Wow. I'll tell you a movie I did a year ago. A uh, movie I did a year ago is getting real popular. Different ways to pee and poop. It was at oh, the Jimmy John's bathroom. It had like these illustrations of how to use the bathrooms. That has thirty eight thousand views so far. Uh, it up my, I'd be uh, I'd be really uh, questioning who's watching that one. I don't know. Like it's you know, like video, though. it's a funny video though. I mean, it's just like it's just like little drawings and stuff. That was at a Jimmy John's yeah. bath. They have a leaner, the thinker, and stuff. I don't know. That's mm. t that's really getting right onto my test kitchens and uh, cooks country video, and then my how to get YouTube to play on your Roku one. Wow. Well, those so yeah, the, the how to ones, I guess, are. Yeah. You know, everyone's looking for those. Yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of competition. Yeah, it took a while though. I've I've I've, I've completely given up on chasing subs and views and shit like that. Yeah. I'm like, it fuck is, it. Well, okay, is the mic is the mic working? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Do you know you know yeah. about Ghislaine Maxwell's dad, Robert Maxwell, right? Yeah, that's what the documentary is about. Yeah. Mainly he him. Was, he, he was a triple agent and a con man. Sure. I mean, he was working. He was working for the Mossad, the KGB, the CIA. Yeah. And, they, and he stole. He stole the pension fund of his own um, newspaper organization. Yeah. Oh, he was and a scumbag, they, man. He was a scumbag, and they found him dead on a sailboat out in the Canary or Canary Islands or Azores or something, and nobody would cop up to what happened to him. So yeah. I imagine they, probably either the Mossad or KGB probably got him. Well, I'm surprised they left him on the boat. Eh, they, you know, probably did it as a warning to the people who, who worked oh, for him. Sure. Yeah. No, then, then, I mean, I mean, that's why this shit's so interesting to people because then there's always these connections between, oh, whatever, there's these fucking weird pedophile elites or whatever the fuck, but there's always a connection to the Mossad and the CIA. Like, it's all sort of like part of business for these you know, spooks and shit like that. Well, okay, okay, look at look at Lord Mountbatten. Okay, Lord Mountbatten, who was in charge of Allied forces in Southeast Asia, was a known pederast who raped boys. And, you know, J. Edgar Hoover warned FDR about it, and they just let it go. Oh, my God, that's fucked up. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. You're yeah, see, you're saying there was a, there was there was a gay rapist whose last name was Mountback? Mountbatten. He oh, was, Mountbatten. Uh, I thought it was Mountback. Oh, no, yeah, Mountbatten. Like, Lord, 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 Lord Mountbatten. He was he was King he was King Charles's. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. He was scumbag. Man. And Mountbatten. Oh no, it gets worse. Mountbatten's wife was in on it too. I mean, it was both of them. Oh, oh yeah, my of course. God. That's hellacious. Jesus Christ. The IRA got it. Though, anything and anything not. Yeah. Hmm. Oh my God, that's crazy. But it's you know it's like Hollywood. Hollywood's always been that way. I I listen. Yeah, Holly to weird. I listened to an interview with um, Shirley Temple, and she talked about how when she was a kid. Yeah. Doing the, the the films that that there was a couple of Hollywood executives that she wouldn't name who put the moves on her, and she was oh a my kid. god, yeah, that's fucked up. Well, they used to have that's why they made that drink to Shirley Temple, so she'd go to the bar with the other guys that have like a non alcoholic drink. That's why they made, and she she hated that fucking drink. You know, yeah. And she hated that fucking drink. That's what she said. I don't even remember what a, what a Shirley Temple is anymore. 
I don't know. I think I might have had one. I know Radar O'Reilly would always have one on MASH. Well, I know what a Roy Rogers is. A Roy Rogers is a Coca-Cola and Grenadine. Oh, okay. But I don't know what a Shirley Temple is. I can't remember. Shirley Temple is like uh, Grenadine, orange juice, and maybe club soda or something like that. Okay. Very, yeah, that doesn't very sound sweet. Bad. Oh, okay. Anything with Grenadine is already not yeah, good. Yeah, it's already sweet. It's all get out. Yeah, it's just too yeah. sweet. That's why, that's why I need a couple, hated the drink, though. That's why I need a couple of cubes of ice and a couple of jiggers of vodka in it. Mm. You know, honestly, like, uh, wow. I like virgin drinks better than the other ones. And I like girl drinks. Like a virgin uh, daiquiri or a virgin pina colada, I think, tastes better. Yeah. Sounds kind of weird. Yeah. I only drink because I'm an alcoholic, basically. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't yeah, give a fuck what I drink. I was still, I still like tequila though. I can't do tequila. Tequila put me, it, it makes me belligerent. I can't do it. Really? Tequila, it. tequila, like a, a good uh, margarita. Yeah, with tequila yeah. for sure. Okay, I'll give you that. Yeah. Those are good. Fuck, I love those, man. I love those fruity drinks. Now, I like a Manhattan or a um, old fashioned, which is there. Both of those are kind of fruity, but old fashioned has the has the um, citrus bitters in it to offset the sweet. Hmm. I don't think I've ever had one of those. I haven't had a lot of sort of fancy drinks. Wow. So what part of Canada do you live in? Vancouver. Okay. That's girl, why I got the salmon. That's why I got the salmon. Oh, okay. Yeah, my girlfriend lived in Montreal for a while. Oh, yeah. Well. She says she said the play the place where she lived was way out in the boondocks in Montreal. She said if it snowed too much, you weren't going anywhere for like three days. Well, yeah, the thing is, is like outside of Montreal, most of Quebec is just a fucking forest. It's a woods. Cold it's forest. Like yep. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're literally the hillbillies of Canada. Like it's not just their French accent. They are like fucking, you know, very, not even rural. Like there's people who just... Fuck, man. They, they discover people, undocumented people who were born without birth certificates, born in the fucking woods. Weird oh shit like that. God. Like well, mountain see, people. Wow. Well, Isolated. Here, okay, in East, in East Tennessee and in Southeast, in, in the Southeast here in East Tennessee, there there's a rumor that's been both, that's been kind of substantiated by some of the things that have happened, that there are feral people who live up in the hills and the Smoky Mountains. And they live in the hills and the wow. caves, and um, they have. There's even a theory that they have that some of them in some areas, you know, it's not like widespread, but in some areas and some clusters, they have their own tunnel networks, and that they steal from and prey on hikers on that in the Appalachians, because mm. there, there's a lot of hikers and campers who just disappear under weird circumstances that are just never seen again. Wow. Now, don't, now, don't get me wrong. If you're dumb, people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But if, but if you're dumb and you walk in the woods, it's really not hard to get yourself killed if you're too far from civilization, if you're really yeah. dumb. I mean, you know. Oh, oh wow. you, can, you can twist your ankle and die. Exactly. Yeah. But, the, but these instances, you have people who are experienced and they just vanish. Oh but, man! But it all started by all the rumor about the about, about the feral people. It started back in like the, um, this kid disappeared in um, 1968 or 69. He he went on a family outing, and there the kids yeah. were playing. The kids decided they were going to play a prank on the adults, and they ran off in the woods and hid. And the little boy was like six years old, and he just disappeared. And the oh, part no. of the, the, part, the, the part of the Smokies where he disappeared. Cade's Cove is where a lot of people used to live back before the, they got kicked out by the park. Well, anyway, a few miles away when he disappeared, this guy claims that he saw a big hairy guy carrying a kid over his shoulders running off into the woods. 
I think I saw a video on that. Yeah, Dennis Martin. Yeah. His, his name, the kid's name was Dennis Martin. Appalachia, right? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was the Great Smoky Mountains in Appalachia. But anyway, the whole Dennis oh Martin God. thing opened up. And, and there's and there's a guy who does a, a channel on YouTube. It's called South Force 10. He claims that his family yeah. um, were paid by the federal government back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. He, plays, he claims some of his family members and some of the family members in, in, the, in the community where he lived were paid to go in and hunt these people and to thin them out so they could have the park. But, you know, it's, mm. it's just just an odd thing. Oh, my God. Yeah. But they're but they're allegedly supposed to be cannibalistic and thieves. And, oh, and, uh, well, and one, one guy pointed out that on um, there's yeah. a stretch of interstate that goes between um, Sevierville is in the heart of the Smoky Mountains in the park to um, Asheville, North Carolina, which is a huge resort city. They said there's a stretch of a stretch of Interstate 40 through there. You will never. He said you will never see roadkill in the road on it. <laughs> and he said and he said the theory is that the that the that the that the people that live up there come out and scavenge the roadkill as soon as it happens. Yeah, that's just takeout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they got <laughs> <laughs> like the cars are Burger King, you know. But you know, there's all kinds. Of well, they, and speaking of that, um, yeah. Oops, but I'm it's sorry. but it's where they came. But you know, it's kind of like that movie, The Hills Have Eyes, and um, hmm. oh, that yeah, that, yeah, that, that series. Wrong turn. Wrong turn. Yeah, I, I saw. I think I saw part of the first. Yeah, one. wrong I, turn. I've never seen the whole thing. I saw part of it, or preview of it, or something. Oh, wrong turn. Really good. Yeah, wrong turns like that. Appalachians. And stuff, you know. But, I mean, talking about like hillbillies and stuff, uh, Coda also Moonshine Mountain and this stuff will kill you. That's two movies that Hershey Gordon Lewis did about like Moonshine and uh, cheating the IRS, the revenueers and stuff like that. That's a really good one. They're both really good. Well, that'd be good. Yeah, I used to make my own moonshine. Uh, I still could. Yeah. I know that. And Larry Drake is on uh, is on this stuff will kill you. Larry Drake's in that one. Boy, Who's Larry him. Drake? Remember the guy who played uh, Dr. Giggles? It was on St. Elsewhere, too. The guy who played Dr. Nope. Giggles, or he was on Dark Man. I don't think I've seen a single episode of St. Elsewhere. Really goofy guy. Yeah, he had Tim. Well, I mean, he was also on Dark Man. I know the name, but I can't Dr. put a Giggles. Face. Yeah, Dr. Giggles. Yeah, he's a really goofy looking guy, though. He played a good bad guy. He's in that one. And then Joe Flaherty's brother Paul uh, Paul Flaherty did some work with Horsey Gordon Lewis in that movie too. <laughs> I don't know what that one. I couldn't believe Joe yet. Flaherty was eighty-five years that old. Was really entertaining. Yeah, I couldn't believe he was that. I old didn't know that either. And I was back weird. Back. I was surprised they talked about freaky music. Yeah. Because I listen, I listened to an interview he did, he did uh, maybe uh, three months ago or something, yeah. and uh, I mean he sounded kind of yeah. loopy, but it, he was bitter. He was yeah. not. I don't know. I don't know if he was such a nice guy because he was just shitting on everybody he ever worked with. But maybe he he was like fucking really? on eighty four. Oh, big time. I yeah. Oh, well, big time. I saw a very but unusual. It was, it was pretty uh, recent. Yeah. Well, I, I saw like a very unusual VHS he did as Count Floyd is about how to make good home movies. It was like a half hour <laughs> long. It was interesting. Another bizarre one I saw. <laughs> I just found that a, a media play of God. It was entertaining. He was, he was doing a whole I think, I think, I think he might have been my favorite SCTV guy. Oh, yeah, I, think, I, I liked his like characters. Too. SCTV yeah. was was such a great show. I need to get it on DVD yeah. if it's available because yeah. I miss it. I used to watch it as in syndication when I was a kid. I always watched it late at night. It was like on late late yeah. at night on 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 um, one of our independent stations. NBC, play it. yeah. And I remember John Candy did uh, "Imitate Divine" too. We were talking about John Waters. Yeah, he did good "Imitate Divine." <laughs> yeah, it was brutal. Funny. Yeah. He did the Jewel like Hollemeyer Christmas special. Yeah, I know. Well, I like, <laughs> he did like uh, 
the fake accents and stuff, or like he tried to do like Magna PI, but the Canadian version. That was so funny. That was a brilliant show. I mean, it's all comedy. People are starting to say comedy anymore. I love all that shit's funny. A Moonshine Mountain and, uh, and this stuff will kill you along with Scum of the Earth are really good. Did, you ever, good did you ever watch that good. Jack that London? Good. Did you ever watch that Jack London Orson Welles thing I sent you? Jack London, no, Orson Welles. I didn't probably watch it. Yeah, it's, it's really good. That's all from the Nash, the NFB, the National that. Film Board. They have some, they have some pretty oh, good really? stuff in them. Yeah. Like the NFB, yeah, it archived a lot of stuff, more than the CBC ever yeah. did. Well, still, I, I like to go to archive.org and see what's on public domain out there. And sometimes I'll yeah. download it and save it, like the old radio programs and such. I'll save them and listen yeah. to them later on. Oh yeah, those are great. They had the Linnea. Yeah, they like the. Old well, they had the Linnea Quigley workout video on there. I saw that. That was like, different. A lot of the old, old time, the old time radio, like um, X minus one. X minus one. Yeah, yes. that's all out there. <laughs> yeah, well, they quickly workout video. Was, yeah, she was working out with zombies and stuff. It was really weird. She Is she a naked? Movie actress back in the day. She was the one that was in pale. Uh, maybe I don't remember. She might she's naked, naked in the workout video. I mean, she was yeah, she on she she did not have a problem with well, nudity at all. On yeah, I know. And like in Return of Living Dead, or she was impaled on antlers, topless in uh, Silent Night, yeah. Deadly Night. Yeah. Oh, she Silent Night, Deadly Night. What a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, you remember the second one? It's Garbage Day. The second one was great. You shot that guy. Garbage Day, that yeah. Such, yeah. That was the second one. There's so many crazy movies out there. That is weird. Eh? Yeah, or like, like um, uh, Boogeyman. I, I, two. I, I have a buddy who makes basically no budget movies. He just gets his friends and they make these yeah. fucking films and give them real stupid titles. Fucking, they're on, yeah. they're on Amazon Prime and Tubi. Like they people, they fucking buy this shit. They'll buy anything. Yeah. You can well, make a movie and get it on Tubi, no problem. Well, here, you know, it's funny because I, I published uh, published a collection of short stories myself on Amazon um, back about 2018, I guess. And I forgot mm. about it, honestly. And suddenly, a few weeks ago, I go and check my bank statement, and I've got a pay or I've got a royalty payment from Amazon Japan, and somebody in Japan paid five bucks to read what I published. <laughs> this many years later, well, that's awesome. Wild. Yeah, it's just wild. <laughs> that's funny. But I, I'd forgotten it was even out there because I just I haven't had well I haven't made the time to write. I don't like to say have because yeah. you know it's a matter of your priorities. But I need to make the time to write again. No, I like like I uh, I don't know. I was telling Jason like I used to be a kind of a semi professional writer. I just gave up, yeah. but. Uh, I do like getting, I do write stuff, but I don't bother try to get it published. It's just kind of fun to get like into that world in your head. Yeah. That's what the magazine basically is. It's just a writing exercise and it's, and it is to freak people out. Awesome. I'm kind of hoping the FBI will visit me. Well, somebody posted a video. I don't know. Somebody posted a video short Maybe. on YouTube. Where the FBI visited a, woman, visited a woman. I mean, they came to her house because she posted something on Twitter critical of Joe Biden and said, yeah, and said "I saw that." Rampant. Yeah, yeah. No, but the, but the weird thing about that video is that the guy says, "Don't worry about it. We do this every day." So it's sort of like what the fuck. You just yeah. randomly go up to every day. You're doing this. Going out and intimidating, intimidating yeah. people daily. 
Yeah, like they and basically she said, Whatever, I'm not answering any of your questions. You didn't show me your ID, I'm filming you. And then they just said, Okay, goodbye. Yeah. So it well, is what, just random fucking intimidation. But what it is is they count on most people not actually worrying about seeing credentials or anything. They want people to be intimidated, so they just shut up. Yeah, yeah, it, ha it has nothing to do with answering the questions. It's about yeah. you feeling scared the next time yeah. you go to post something. Yep. Yeah. That's all it's about. Because they don't have anything legal backing up what they're saying. No, they don't. About. There, there's no there's no legal. I mean, you know, if you if you published a direct threat or something, that's different. They can come after you for that. A credible threat. And um, but you know, if, if you're just posting, well, you know, <laughs> my congressman sucks, my congressman sucks and he's a crook. Well, they can't do anything about that. Well, this this thing just looks like it was written by a completely crazy person. And it's yeah. going out to random people with no return address and fax machines and targeted celebrities. I don't know. I could see them going to the fuck, man. Well, well, don't forget. Just, just make sure, make sure you make sure you, make sure you the next make sure, bomber. Make, make sure you spoof the, your um, number for the outgoing fax if you're doing it manually. So I, I don't really, I don't really even care. I'll yeah. just do it from, I'll do it from a Kinko somewhere. I'll yeah, be on camera. Go, go to the Kinkos and do it. Yeah. I don't have a fax machine, so. Yeah, I'm not, what, yeah I'll do it. I don't know. Do it from the library. Mm. I mean, the aesthetic is I would, I should just send everything from the public library. Yeah. <laughs> That would that would make more sense because it'd be like some some random homeless guy and they're scribbling a bunch of crap down and sending it to people. Yeah, and even yeah. when I go do it because I'll be on camera, I'll just wear some really fucking raggedy clothes and go in there and fucking start faxing shit. Raggedy clothes and a hoodie and a sunglasses and you're good to go. <laughs> the library is like, why are you sending all these faxes? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> But I I could see I could see myself get like here, like I don't know it's pretty bad in the U.S. But in Canada, especially government workers or library workers, they're so scared of offending anybody, yeah. right? Like I could literally walk in with my pants down and a fucking arrow in my head, and and they would just like, okay, everyone deserves respect. Yeah. 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 Oh wow. Uh, our, our downtown Birmingham library used to be a haven for the homeless, and we would have people sit in there and masturbate or whatever. And yeah. the um, and the um, <laughs> librarians would barely even notice. <laughs> no, it, it, I think that's every library everywhere. Like I don't live like I don't live in downtown Vancouver. Like I live outside of it. The, the library here is small, and it's still yeah. filled with bums. Yeah. That's insane. That's just absolutely insane. Because I know our library, yeah, it's not, not like that. Yeah, our library, not, but it's only library? Open our library. Our so library, no, we only, we're only open like three days a week. Our library just at random hours and stuff. Now we don't have anything like that around here. They got to change like, the definition of library. Yeah, what we should just be called a place like for that. homeless people to bathe and. Use yeah. the bathroom, yeah, bathe and yeah, sit and randomly scream at people yeah. and yeah. wear books as hats <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> wear books as hats. That's crazy. But you know what? Oh, there's man. there's a library near me, and you know what? Oh, they man. rent out video games. You can you oh, can oh, fucking oh, yeah. you, you can get a PS5 and a bunch of games. It's like holy fuck. I've never done it. Well, I mean, I they used to run out DVDs and DVDs and VHS tapes too. Ours did, you know. You but video out, games? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, video games is new. But I mean, like uh, you run out like movies and v DVDs and uh, records and tapes and stuff, you know. Yeah. They had they were running Devo stuff out too. I remember that in Germany. <laughs> I was, you know in. In the downtown Vancouver library, which you can see in any movie, it's very iconic looking. It's in a lot of sci-fi. It's very sci-fi looking. Uh, they have like three podcasting, fully equipped podcasting studios. I've never used them. 
yeah. professional yeah. road mics, all that stuff. That's kind of cool, really. When you get right down, yeah, to it's that. pretty wild. I've never seen yeah. anyone use it. They're always empty. A little too far away for me, but wow. But what I've always thought would be absurd is to push the buttons and go somewhere, like say, go somewhere wearing clothes made out of pancakes or something, and see what happens. Just see how just how people treat you if you're in public wearing a <laughs> pancake suit. Like Tom Green. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I forgot about that guy. What, whatever happened to him? Did he just kind of fade away? I guess. Uh, he's just he does he does stand up and uh, he does a, a very shitty kind of podcast from his cabin. He lives out in the woods. Okay. He does. He's he's not he's not the same he dude does anymore. YouTube videos too. Well, he does YouTube videos too. I see it on YouTube. Yeah. Just no, I'm subscribed too. to him. He's pretty yeah. pretty. He's well, just he, a chill out old guy now. Yeah. Well. You know, he was just he was just all over the place there on MTV and all over the yeah. media there for about two years, yeah. two or three years, and then he just like he never happened. You know, he's boom gone. Well, no, he started. He a, a talk yeah, he did yeah, a talk show out of his house. Good. Okay, that's yeah. pretty cool. And it was pretty fucking wild in the beginning because uh, like 4chan, 4chan found out about him immediately yeah. when he started doing that, and they just fucked with him for years. But he played along. He was like, oh, whatever. It's 4chan. You got to play along. I mean, it's either that yeah. or you have, you have no a bunch of, You've got a bunch of board guys who have access to technology who are going to no. do something to screw you up if you don't play along. Yeah, you got actual high IQ yeah. but crazy people. But crazy like people. it's right. a very right. dangerous right. combination. And bored. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because 4chan actually helped. They actually found a body one time collectively you know they got together and geolocated this guy claimed to kill his girl and they geo geolocated her and called the cops and everything he was up in kansas somewhere hmm. and um he got on social media oh yo blah 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 they'll never find me well they did because you, you <laughs> found out about it yeah no it doesn't doesn't take much no no it really doesn't no you know, 4chan, though, used to be the Wild West about 10 years ago. It really was. Oh, yeah. It was nuts. I, I found out well, about 4chan by watching the Tom Green show. Because he just kept saying, 4chan. I'm like, the fuck yeah. is 4chan? Looked it up. Yeah. And I didn't understand. I'm like, what is this shit? Anime? Yeah. But, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, just garbage i i don't know who runs it now a collection of fucking intelligence yeah. agencies probably probably pro probably a bunch of probably a bunch of glowies and porn addicts yeah 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 exactly glow in the darks hey ask how you doing buddy El Gab was kind of like that sort of but not in a much tamer scale they would tell they would constantly t call in to tom green's show and tell him to do a barrel roll really and it drove him nuts oh, wow. yeah it was oh, very wow. innocent right do a barrel roll oh, okay. but they kept they, doing it they did it so much he started losing it right yeah. <laughs> they used to call in the guy on the um the bald guy that had the pawn shop show that was popular like 10 12 years ago yeah. They used to call him all the time and ask ask if he had battle toads in stock too. Fuck, <laughs> really? <game> battle toads. <laughs> That's <laughs> old school. Yeah, battle toads <laughs> even even predates memes almost. That was just yeah. some weird thing you call a GameStop and say. Because it's like it's like a, an obscure old Nintendo cartridge. I mean, it's it's. Way the hell back, and I'm oh, it's, it's, it's a working. pretty decent game, actually. It's hard. Everybody says, you know, I, I've heard of it. I mean, you know, I had a Super NES back in the day with the first ex wife, and you know, we would play like um, Mech Warrior or um, oh, one of the star, one of the shitty Star Wars games that came out back then. But you know, it was it was what it was. Mech Warrior was fun. 
But I'm sure he could probably run it on a cell phone emulator for nothing now. Oh no, phones. yeah, no problem. Like right now, I've I've got a uh, Nintendo Switch emulator on my computer. Like emulators are catching up to current day technology, right? Which is pretty yeah. wild. It's inevitable at a will, you know. It's. I haven't played any of the games. I think I might play Zelda. I don't know. The only I've got an Xbox One. The only really oh. games I play is, is, I, is I play um, Fallout Three until I get bored because everything's so linear on it. And I play Fallout New Vegas because I love it because you get to, you get to work on and craft your own guns and it's set out yeah. west and it's kind of a combination between cowboys and science fiction. So it's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, oh big Fallout That's fan. Good. Huge Fallout fan. And since we're about to live in Fallout times, the way things are going, you know, may as well get. I don't know if you go to. Go to downtown San Francisco and start wondering, you know, you ask yourself, did a bomb fucking hit? Yeah. Yeah, my my, my second ex, um, she's, still, she's, still, she's still in the corporate world. She travels to California a lot for work, for conventions, that sort of thing. And, my, and she always loved to go to um, San Francisco, go to Chinatown, go down to the wharf, and go look, at the, go look at the sea lions and all that. And she said the last time she went to San Francisco, she said, Nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not leaving the convention center. You can keep it. Because she said it was just that dangerous. Yeah, and who that. wants to step in human shit on the sidewalk? Yeah, exactly. Human, HIV, infected, no way. Um, drug addict, diarrhea. Yeah, that's what you're going to step in in uh, San Francisco. Yeah. I don't know. That ain't bad. That ain't good. <laughs> oh man i'm gonna dip i'm gonna dip outside for a break but uh i'm still i'll i'm still listening yep oh man i don't know if I, i'll just mute myself okay. do you have any big plans for your office mm. for um, me? me? Nah, not really. Just, I mean, the live stream was like my biggest thing because I can't really do it on work and stuff, you know. That was like my biggest thing right there, you know. Well, not a whole I, lot I, going I, on. I think we've got. Well, the eclipse is going on. Yeah, I want to see that. I mean, if it'll be Solar right, eclipse. I mean, I'll see if I can see it on the porch, you know. See what happens. It's weird though, because my sister bought a whole bunch of glasses, right? And she found out that my niece, who worked at County Fair, didn't tell her they were giving away for free. She bought a whole bunch of glasses. So I oh, Lord. Some of them. I mean, my friend John gave me one too, so a pair of them too. I guess there's some at Walmart for $1.98 yeah. too. But I mean, they're oh, yeah. they're making a huge profit off of it. They're talking about the Erie Speedway is a place to watch it, right? And they said all the hotel companies are saying, like, all the hotels are booked. They don't even bother calling. They're telling people not to bother calling. But the Erie Speedway, uh, it was like 20 bucks for parking. And then uh, to be right in the event, is like 30 bucks. So it's like pretty much you're trying to 50 bucks to look into the sky with glasses on. That's crazy. They know what I mean. They've been playing this it for a long nuts. time, though. They go, that's probably the most money they're ever going to make, you know. Yeah, that is pretty. It's, yeah. Yeah. I know that's crazy. I mean, it's 50 bucks looking in the sky, though. That's I know what to say about that. Well, you know? uh, if you own a facility like that, get them at your money where you can, yeah. I don't, you know, we our our racing in Birmingham has all moved out to the suburbs. We've got a um, yeah. got a Grand Prix track. The um, bar and they're running a they're running a Grand Prix type race. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, I think it's the third weekend, third or fourth weekend of the, this month. I think I'm going to be in town, yeah. Anderson, which sucks. I love, this, I love Grand Prix racing and uh, Formula One. Yeah. But um, like um, NASCAR and all that, they have, they don't have anything to do with Birmingham anymore. They used to have a short track over at the Birmingham oh, really? Fairgrounds. Yeah. They had a NASCAR short track at the Birmingham Fairgrounds. And when they tore down the fairgrounds to build the um, sporting complex, then it pretty well they pretty well tore up the track and everything else too. So they're just done. You know, there's not anything out there anymore. But the but the, the Alabama State Fair, it's not even in Birmingham anymore. It's in the suburbs. But that's why we can't have nice things in Birmingham. So you're directly in the path of the transit of the eclipse? I was supposed to be, you know, or close enough, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know. I know, hopefully it's, I mean, right, well, they said right in the line where on the Erie Speedway, I mean, they may be like 20 miles away from that, so hopefully I'll be able to see it, you know? Yeah, I'm sure you will be. I mean, it's up yeah, in the sky. So up, what, yeah. well, hey, at least it's not supposed yeah. to rain because yeah. you know, look, every time there, there's been anything lunar going on or like or like the um, Perseids or Leo yeah. or anything, oh, it's, right. it's always rained in my area, so I never yeah. see jack crap because of the weather. Yeah. Yeah. That is crazy, too, you know. But no, I stopped for gas a while back at the um, at the gas yeah. gas chain that has that has chicken, and it's just after having that chili yeah. this morning. After oh, that, that chili, uh, that crispy, crunchy chicken. Yeah, that you mean not, that convenience store has the chicken in the back? No, no, it's, it's it's not a crispy, crunchy. It's um um Dodge's Dodge's Southern style. They they sell chicken and they sell gasoline. It's like a oh really? A, it's like a big convenience store chain. But they also sell chicken and like um, they sell these okay. things called pizza. They sell these things called pizza sticks that are like um, they're like little pizza roll ups. Yeah. Things. And they sell these. Um, yeah. They, they they sell the old style fried pies. Like like tornadoes. Used to have. Yeah. They have yeah. they sell the old style fried oh, okay. pies like McDonald's used to have. They sell strawberry and, and apple pies. Yeah. And they sell chi- they sell chicken fingers and bone in chicken and you know. But it's it just it just I don't know just the smell of it just kind of put me off today. It just smelled like maybe they needed to change the oil yeah. in their deep fat fryer or something. So eh. change the one degrees. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just wasn't that hungry anyway. I may stop and get pizza uh-huh. tomorrow or something uh-huh. a little later. I ended up getting one of those shrimp rings after you told me about it. Oh today. man! I went to Walmart real early in the morning. Yeah. I mean, it's like eight ninety eight. I don't think that's too horrible though of price at Walmart. That's not too bad. Yeah, I think I think the, how, what is it? Like, like like a pound or pound and a half of shrimp or something on it. It might like be a pound and a half or two. It might be yeah. two pounds. It, okay, it was two pounds. A, I mean, that's it's not like bad. eight ninety. Yeah, that's eight, not, that's bad. not bad. I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, every so often you'll see like prices aren't that horrible. I think Wild Fork Foods won like thirteen dollars, which is more pricey. It was still good though. And then I got like this beer battered uh, shrimp from. Uh, Budweiser was like eight ninety nine too. So when I when I stopped yeah. last night in Chambers, I mean I got to... no. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh no, no. I, I like those. Do uh, you like the chicken fillets they have at Walmart? I mean a little uh, the little like the little fillet. I that's kind of like Long John Silver's. I like four eighty eight. That's not too bad for ten of them. I haven't seen them yet. Some I haven't seen those yet. Yeah, I mean Walmart made their own version of like. Uh, Fish sticks and fish fillets. I think they're pretty good. Yeah, know? I buy I buy the Walmart fish sticks, but I you know I don't care about yeah. fish sticks. I, I just like fish sticks anyway. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, well, I, I stopped in Chambersburg last night and dropped the dropped the little yeah. puppy off, 
and yeah. um, a guy had driven down from Pittsburgh with his buddy, and I get to talking to them, and they're they're both into guns. So we stand around out in the parking lot for 30 minutes talking about guns. Well, anyway, I got to go Ooh, get wow. a room. I have to go get a room pretty soon because I'm about to crash out. So I go in okay. Giant. I go to Giant Grocery yeah. Store, and they had their uh, deli chicken. It was an eight-piece dark for four ninety-nine. Yeah. So I got oh, an eight-piece dark and some bread. I got a I got a, a short yeah. and a small. They had they had half a loaf of bread, and I got some bread and I got um, a couple of juice drinks. So me and the dogs that I'm, that I'm taking back, we had chicken last night before I got in my hotel room. I, just, I would just peel the skin off and give them the meat out of the chicken and gave them little paper bowls. But uh, Giant, Giant. Oh, that's cool. It's funny because Giant, it, it was advertised as spicy fried chicken, but I guess it may be spicy yeah. for their local palate because if you're from the South, yeah. you know, like spicy chicken, it's going to light you up. You know, like the, like the spicy... Uh, yeah. Like the Nashville hot chicken or the spicy, the spicy chicken I, from. Um, I um, never Nashville had an official hot chick, uh, Nashville hot chicken before. I think I had some at Giant Eagle, maybe. That's about it. But I haven't had like official. Uh, aside from that, you know. There's a there's a restaurant there's a restaurant in town. There's a couple of them now that sell Nashville hot chicken, and I think they, yeah. I think one of them's already gone out of business because it was kind of a fad for a while. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, you know, you know how things go. You know, it's like, yeah, everything's kind of a fad. You know, like oh, hot Nashville hot chicken or, or um, sous vide. When everybody's into sous vide cooking, you know, where you put it in the boiler and it's got the little time. You put it on a time cooker in yeah. the water and then you, and then you grill it. Yeah. You know, sous vide went away, went away too. But it's it's pretty good cooking technique, really. Yeah. But you know. Yeah. Every everything now seems to be in the fast food industry. It's either chicken wraps, or it's taking your French fries or tater tots and pouring something over it and calling it an entree. Because <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what I've seen done with all the tater tots, like at Sonic and um, my local chain, Jacks. Jacks does that. They have these new loaded tater tots for like four bucks. Yeah, but you know. I'm not going to pay that much for, for freaking French fries. Those are which... good, too. Well, some, yeah. some... Well, I mean, I like that smash. Oh, the bowl thing? Yeah. Potato bowl. Yeah. That they have it on KFC. French fries with, uh, yeah, mashed potatoes over it. And then they have, like, cheese and uh, onions. And then they have this. And then you, for another couple bucks, you get, like, uh, chicken nuggets on them. I don't think those are bad. No, but I mean that's, that's, that's a variation on the famous bowl with um with the potatoes instead of the instead of the mashed potatoes. Yeah. Kind of oh yeah. Thing. A little cheaper though too. I mean I like the famous bowl too. But I remember I remember I never even thought about that. I remember Patton Oswald did that uh did a skit about that. That was so cool. I guess his wife passed away too. But he wasn't doing yeah, stuff she, for a while and he came back. Yeah, she died a few years ago. Okay. She just seemed like she died kind of suddenly. Wow. She wasn't that old. I think she was like maybe in her forties or like late forties or so. She wasn't that old. I couldn't imagine losing love on like that. I mean, well, it's bad if I lost my dad, you know. Yes, yeah, it'd be tough losing a spouse like that, especially when you got kids and you're not, you know, you're yeah. you're not that not that yeah, old. I know. And, suddenly happens you know you're talking you know it's different if you're yeah if you're if you if you're on up there like you're you know you're over 70 or something yeah. but yeah to lose them like that when you're yeah. both in your late 40s early 50s that's pretty harsh yeah that, yeah it is wow oh man Yeah, it is really bad. I don't know, man. But you know, he was you know, he was doing the voices for like the a lot of the animated movies there for a while. Yeah. Patton Oswalt. Well, I mean I surprised I mean he became a real actor though, cause I remember just him being like he was in a whole bunch of movies, like he was in uh uh that 
AO AP Bio. He was in Wrong Turn Two. He was in the second Wrong Turn movie. He, I mean, he was in uh, Justified, though. I mean, he's becoming a real actor, though. Yeah, you know, oddly enough, um, we watched the movie a few weeks ago. You know who David Cross is, don't you? From um, Arrested yeah. Development, and um, he was in he was in Mr. Show with yep. Bob Odenkirk. Bob and Tom. Um, yeah, Mr. Um, yeah, yeah. He anyway, he was in a he was in a movie. I can't remember the name of it, but he plays this professor who goes out looking for this butterfly out in California on his own. Yeah, and he goes out in the yeah. wilderness. It's a great movie. Yeah. I wish I could remember the name of it, but if you ever get a chance to watch it, watch it because David Cross really cuts his chops acting in that movie. It's really good. It wasn't that run, running, run, was it? I no, no. I can't yeah, remember the life. Me. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, okay. Well, I remember he was in that. Uh, I saw I, my niece and nephew once the album of the Chipmunks, and he. I thought he was. Oh. Funny and it, I was the only one laughing at that when having it playing the bad guy. Yeah, a lot of people gave I thought crap it was funny that movie that my niece about that. That you're only laughing at. Yeah, a lot of people gave him crap really? about that. I thought yeah. it was funny though. And really? Well well I thought it was know, funny because he was being like real cynical and stuff in the movie. Yeah. They they essentially said, Yo, you sold out, blah blah I, blah. Well, okay. He he's an actor. He's got to pay his bills. Yeah, that's that's, that's what he said yeah, in an interview. Money. He said, "Look, he said he said he said the the what I made from Alvin and the Chipmunks bought a summer home. You know, why am I gonna you know why am I gonna crap on that? Yeah, when, you know it pays the bills. Yeah, well, just like people gave Michael Caine crap for being in Jaws: The Revenge, and then he said he bought a, a house for his mom. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, I, Jaws of Revenge wasn't as bad. I thought it was all right. It was funny. But I'm not funny, but I, I thought it was all right movie. Not perfect, though, but it was, I've seen worse. Well, as what much crap that movie what, gets, I've seen far worse. What was funny What's about that? Michael Michael Caine was Michael Caine played Scrooge in the Muppet Christmas movie. Yeah. And they said that when he took the role, they told him, they said, well, you know, you can play around with the role if you want to, if you want to. And they said he looked at the director and said, "Oh no, I'm playing this as serious as, as serious as death." And he oh, was okay. in, the, in the in the Muppet in the Muppet Christmas Carol. You know, he's he's yeah. he's a straight out he's a straight out villain in the movie. You know, he doesn't cut any slack for anything. Yeah. But you know, some actors yeah. are just like that. They they you know Tom Cruise. That's the reason Tom Cruise is still working after being in movies for nearly forty years. Yeah. Because Tom Tom Cruise, if you pay him to be in a movie, he's bringing his A game every time. He's not slacking off. He's bringing that A-game. I know. And a lot of and a lot of a lot of actors and actresses, they just get to exactly. a point where they, they just they just phone it in, you know. And um, Cruz is one of them who just doesn't. Plus the fact that you know he, he clearly keeps himself in shape, where he can still play an action role. Even yeah, though exactly. Here, even though he's sixty years old. It's weird. I mean, it's just so nuts, man. But it's also really sad to see what's happened to Bruce Willis. That's just really heartbreaking. I know. I, I, last I saw, last footage I saw of him was for his birthday, and they were singing "Happy Birthday" to him. And they said in an interview later that he's nonverbal. Yeah. Now, that he that he's completely nonverbal, which is sad. It must be. Oh man, that's messed up. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly. That is sad. Hey, let me hop off for a minute. I need sad, to call man. and check on the girlfriend. I, if if you're on later, I'll hop back on. Okay. Maybe, you know, I'll be off for a little while, but I'll be right back I, on. Yeah, I might. I. Yeah, I'm gonna log off maybe because I someone else is doing something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna take there, a break take, for now. Yeah, take a break. Take care. I'll talk to you later, man. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Cody, I'm going to take a break, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it. It was nice, awesome talking to you, brother, okay? I know you have to dip out, too. All right. I'm going to take a break, brother.
I want to let you know I'm going to end it. Okay, let me, uh, let me, uh, read this. Thank you for being on, Coda. Thanks for being on, Coda. Thanks for being on uh, the Son of Victus. I love you guys very much. I'm going to take off. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs>